Hail and well met. I am Mr. Eager DM at your service, and we welcome you all at one, all in one, one and all, to Trapped at Home, a live stream Dungeons and Dragons experience brought to you by Lawful Stupid RPG. Thank you for being here. We do appreciate it. For the past year, this group has been playing through the 5th edition module Descent into Avernus, but tonight we continue our hiatus from the Plains of Hell and look in on a different set of adventurers from an earlier time. Joining us tonight, we have Boletus the Druid, Artem the Artificer, Sechmet the Sorcerer, and Jexter the Bard. Unfortunately, Cordelia the Cleric had to run off just moments ago. She is very ill. We wish her the best. Um, and also, Zelmira the Monk is unable to join us tonight. Uh, and we wish her the very best, wherever she is. Um, so this is our group for tonight. I think it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true. And let imagination rule for the next few hours. Last time, the adventurers found themselves traveling through the vast, gray, misty expanse of the Astral Sea aboard a commandeered skiff. They were in shock and grieving at the loss of their friend Shamziel, but pressed on regardless. After a few days of travel, they arrived at a huge floating structure, a citadel resting atop a large moat of earth and rock. They infiltrated it from beneath, finding it occupied by minotaurs who were apparently guarding an inactive teleportation circle. The party slew them with clever track The party slew them with clever tactics and magic and began to explore the structure. As they did, they realized that a pitched battle had taken place in the keep some point in the past, as the numerous hallways and chambers were scorched, their contents turned to ash. In addition to the minotaurs, they found strange glowing and pulsating cocoon-like structures that caused corruption and mutation whenever anyone drew near. Destroying these things from afar, they attracted the attention of demons who rushed to attack them, only to be cut to ribbons as they passed over Boletus' spike growth spell. Unfortunately, at the very end of the battle, as Zelmira raged against an enormous ape-like demon with her fists, some of its vile blood splattered over her face. With a groan, she turns towards the rest of you, her beautiful features contorted in agony as she begins to gag. Hey, shit. Um, so Artem, seeing this, would immediately run to her and and just panic. See, Sally, Sally, are you okay? She opens her mouth to answer, but no words come forth. Instead, she just... And you see her tongue is sort of hardening and beginning to extend, and a disgusting, proboscis-like appendage just sort of extrudes out of her mouth. Long, sharp spike on the end. It's dripping with a horrid, corrosive slime that sizzles as it drips upon the stone floor and it sticks out about 12 inches and then just stops, her eyes wide, looking down at this thing that's just coming out of her mouth. It's a part of her now. Boletus, uh, uh, do something! Uh, uh, I'll place my hand and... The, the glow of blue appear around his his hand, and I will try to. Oh, I will cast lesser restoration to see if that works. Um, you expend the spell, and you see the blue energy sort of course all over her body, and it comes up to her mouth. And then there's this darkness that extends from her mouth that pushes back the blue light, and the spell has no effect. Can, can you breathe, Sally? Oh, she appears to be able to breathe, and she's got a bit of a panic. You can see her uh, chest rising and falling, but after a moment, 
she begins to calm her monk training taking over and she still has this disgusting thing extruding from her mouth and it you can see it must be painful and there's a a, a bit of a blistering that's happening around her mouth where this thing has come out but uh, other than that it feel, looks as if she is not in any great distress or pain it's just gross. Artem immediately grabs her hands and just we're gonna figure it out we're gonna fix it we're gonna fix it it's gonna be okay and he looks at her and sees her trying to gather her own calm and he's basically telling her so that he can essentially tell himself because he's very very worried well after a few moments of this she calms down and she you know making sure that as she turns around she doesn't hit anybody with this new part of her body she just sort of stands there and shrugs her shoulders as if Asking what next? So anything I can think of that would work for this? Um, make a uh, medicine or religion check. Your choice. Religion. All right. It's got plus can five. I make one as well, Sean? Fourteen. Uh, yes, you may make a religion check. Artem using my Kraken dice. Uh, 10 plus 5 is a 15. So. Um, so, both of you, you're familiar with fiends, and although you don't have that much experience understanding the difference between what constitutes a devil and what constitutes a demon, um, based on the what you observed happening when the skeletons you had got close to the cocoons and they took on this corrupted form um and seeing this uh this is old old magic that is tapped into some of the primal forces that shaped existence um, it is probably reversible through magic but it's going to be something that's on a power level that you don't think you currently possess it could also simply go away in time. Um, maybe, maybe we'll find some answers if we keep pressing. Uh, we destroyed this goo ball to the yes, right. Yes, that goo ball is <laughs> the goo ball. <laughs> that goo ball is destroyed. What was the other thing that I coined a very like? banal name for you put a lot of like heart and soul into creating it oh that's it part something. of being a dm <laughs> samus um are the spike is the spike growth gone uh it is i mean it it, it what's the, like, the I duration on it. it yeah i could yeah, drop I, mean, it. I assume that that Boletus would have dropped it yeah as soon as the threat was gone but it's i could be wrong to, it's up to 10 minutes so um so yeah, spike growth still uh, in that area, and less Boletus, you you decided to drop it. I just want to make uh, make sure it's anyone that walks into it. I think it is. Um, so yeah, I will take it down. And then... All right. So the spike growth just sh shrinks back down into the stonework, um, and uh, you can see there's now puddles of the same sort of disgusting ichor that. Uh, Come, seems to come the, the blood from both the small creatures and this large one that splash over um, Zelmira seems to be the same kind of substance, the same blood. Um, although there's a quite a much larger amount of it from the uh, the ape-like uh, creature that you were fighting, um, but even it is beginning to seep into the cracks in the stone floor. Um, horrible stench, but it sort of begins to. Uh, dissipate as well it's sort of uh, as it's sinking down and into the stone it's also sort of evaporating into the air shall we shall we press on uh, let me go first boy okay i'll go first hold on um, i just need so, oh. a quick moment i took a shot or two does, does anyone else salmira you Forgive me, but you look damaged. Did anyone else? Oh yes. Did anyone else get hit? 
she nods, and you can see, yes, yeah, she's got lacerations all on her arms. Her um, sleeves are in ribbons. Looks like she managed to dodge a bunch of blows that came very close to killing her. But um, she is quite wounded. Uh, well, let, let me take care of that. Um, he will stamp his staff onto the floor, and a burst of light will just appear around everyone. I will walk back into the group first before I do that. And okay. I will cast Aura of Vitality. Um, and What does that do? It does 2d6 healing for 10 rounds. Very nice. Two. So I cast on Zomira first. 2d6 healing. Will you go ahead and roll that for me there, Belitis? Uh, seven. First one. Okay. I've got 10 of these, so another seven. Nice. So what's she on now? Uh, she's getting closer. She's, she's at 75%. Looking, definitely looking better than she was. Okay, I will do it again. Four, five. All right, so now she's, so, uh, she's going to be at full. You might consider giving that full uh heal to somebody else based yeah, on what you I'm observe from her damaged wound. and is anyone else damaged In cordelia i know that you also were hit take some good I'm stuff fine oh, oh, let me i know i know every step closer to death is a step closer to the void and the blackness get healed girl i need <laughs> I, you I, I i'm on half so i'll do myself next uh for two that's lots that's 11. Da, 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 heal. Um, somebody's out. That's four. So it's one, two, three, four, five rounds. I've still got five rounds left. Well, that's probably going to be enough to get everybody everyone to max. Yeah. Yeah. is not wounded at all. Um, Just yeah. permanently damaged. That's all. I think. <laughs> I think I could easily get everyone to max. Yeah, I, I believe you are correct with that. Yeah. Um, everyone's at max. Everyone's at max. All right. I mean, you you could roll all ones, Jade. So you do need to roll them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. So I'll do myself again. So it's five and again. So number five. So that's me done. Um, and who else is it afterwards? I was with... six down, but Jexter is a Jexter. lot lower than I am. Oh, what's Jax doing? Well, now he's on full, but he was, I was on... 16 down. Yeah. Okay, so... so I'll, I'll go back line. to where I was. Well, that's easily you covered. Yeah. And I think that's I've it. got... There we go. Nice. And we're good. So we're it? all Is worked that So that's one, two, yep. three, four, five, six. That's... Hang on. That's one, two, I, one three, One for me. Four, Should five, six, it. seven. That's eight. I've still got one left I've got. So that'd be... That's a pretty good spell, isn't it? Oh, oh rolled double ones. <laughs> okay, so I'm not at all. Artem, one. that's okay. You, you are blessed with negative one inspiration. Congratulations, Artem. That's from the Twitch <laughs> chat. That's not from me. I, I heard. I saw that. Thanks, That's guys. not from me. You yeah. just proved it. <laughs> all right, folks. Yeah, well, sorry, uh, Artem. Zelmira stands there, um, sort of touching this thing, just sort of completely grossed out by it but coming to terms with it um what did the rest of you do what did was that cordelia that was saying something before we uh did you say something uh, on her behalf sean i said that she doesn't feel she said she didn't seem to be that concerned about her wounds oh okay uh all right well, ladies, let, let let's go okay I will head first and stay 10 feet in front of everyone. Alrighty. I will. So tell me when follow. you want me to stop. Uh, you can stop wherever you want as you turn around this corner. This area seems to have uh, sustained some damage, but as far as the other area, uh, which seemed to have just had a fire that seemed to just rage through it, um, consuming everything, uh, leaving only the stone and some debris. Um, the, uh, this area seems to have been, uh, spared from the fire. Um, 
these uh, the room that the that um, a monkey jade saw uh, and destroyed the uh, the cocoon that was in there uh, appeared to have been um, either a guard room or a guest room at some point. We didn't search it though, did we, Sean? You did not. Uh, I'm gonna go in and give it a quick once over, if I may investigate. Artem, what are you doing? I just if there's something that can help her, I want to find it. Go ahead and You're roll investigation. Such, such a completionist, Artem. Dirty twenty, Sean. Dirty twenty. Uh, um, you find nothing of here in here of value. Uh, and as you are searching through here, you get the impression that this is this has been ransacked before. Somebody else has been through all of this area, and perhaps anything of value, of intrinsic value, might have already been taken. Um, what this current crew is here doing, uh, other than laying these cocoons um, you don't know but it certainly wasn't looking for treasure okay I will relay it keep going Belitis I'll continue on be careful I'll take a listen at this door and as before if I do lose track of Zelmira and Cordelia as we're following just to be just to assume that they are following along behind you yeah uh, all right. Oh, so we come to another then. door. Um, <clears throat> this one you have not yet been in. I will listen at it first. Go ahead. Make your perception My check. Best skill. Ooh, 22. 22. Uh, appears to be silent, much like all the other ones you've listened for. I will open it. Opening the door, you reveal another room appearing to be either a barracks or a guest room. Difficult to tell with the amount of decay and, uh, and damage from whatever happened here um, and in the very middle on the table is the smallest yet of the little glowing green cocoon like structures that you've seen um, uh, it sits there uh, as you look at it at this size you actually can see something in it that appears to be just sort of squirming and wiggling around inside uh, Arthur, my dear uh, get your lizard to blow that one up I, okay and uh, and I'll send Jade in, but I think she would relay if there was something inside. Um, All right, wait. so she flies in and um, does her force thing. It only takes a couple of hits, and and she does. There's a little squirming thing that's inside it that like looks vaguely fish-like, although it has a bizarrely human-like uh, face on the front. Um, kind of looks up and the eyes sort of roll up and look at the thing and opens and closes its mouth a few times and then dies and then melts along with the rest of the cocoon very similar to the other creatures that you've encountered uh, did, did, did the other ones do that boy? I, I don't remember seeing that before did, I, did we Sean? I don't, that, that sounds like no but this is the smallest one you've seen if the other, if the thing was inside the other ones that grew larger, the longer than it grew, it could be that it's simply the outer portion of the cocoon was too far away from whatever was on the inside. You may make an Arcana check if you. Oh, not a nature check. Oh, I, I can, can assist I with can, that Arcana yeah, check. Yeah, I can also. Somebody else. Uh, uh, of course, well, you can. Okay. Oh, all right. Here we go. Uh, so are you rolling with so a with, with with Jexter's help, Artem? With. Uh, ooh, I rolled a 17 and an 18 plus 5, so that would be a 23. 23. Oh, not bother. Um, some sort of mutation happening based also on the blood and the effect that it's had upon Sekhmet. Um, you wonder if there is some sort of, uh, process by which, um, some of the demons that you've seen or... Uh, maybe some that they had with them that were on a more primitive scale that once this process is established and has begun they can grow and become other things um, sort of a bizarre spawning area for other demons it's, it's good we're destroying them but that's really disconcerting I swear to you Artem this is the worst kind of magic. This is just the worst. Always the summoners. They're the ones that just have no conscience at all. Yeah. We need to I... keep moving, though. We, we really... I know it's hard for everybody to remember this, but 
My childhood home is under attack. I know. We I should. We should go. We should go. I'm sorry. I will move you come around the zone. corner. You see another door. This one again, completely destroyed. Obviously, the creature that you fought down at the lower end is far too large to have passed through any of these doors with anything other than just completely destroying them. Um, and. So this one is no different. Inside this chamber, this appears to have been a chapel of some sort. There are still pews barely evenly laid out. Um, this chamber is old. There is a layer of dust and ash, but it doesn't appear to have seen much damage from whatever this fight was that happened however long ago. Uh, and it is laid out very similar to any other chapel that you may have been in. There are four pillars that support a roof about 20 feet up. These benches that are laid out in between them and then an altar. The one odd thing about this chapel is that instead of a holy symbol that you're familiar with, there is a figure that you have never seen before. Uh, about 10 feet tall, crafted of stone. Appears to be female, although the head is bald. The elves have a slightly tapered look. Um, a very severe expression, eyes sunken in with uh, looks like dark circles painted and then dripping down as if almost as if tears of black um, ink are pouring out of the eyes. Armored very heavily, wearing um, a sort of a, a tabard or a, some sort of battle dress that is armored with very large shoulder pads, um, uh, pauldrons, and wings extending along the back. Um, one hand uh, is clutching a, um, a large hammer, and the other hand appears to have been lopped off at the uh, middle of the wrist, middle of the forearm, and extending from it is a chain at the end of which it looks like some sort of wicked glaive, uh, not glaive, a wicked um, morning star or flail. It looks like that it was recently in the process of being defaced. And in the corner, you see the body of uh, one of the smaller demons that you have been encountering. And it's odd because all the other demons that you killed instantly turned into goo. This one is still a body. And you can, as you're looking at it, you can see that there's movement happening from inside its chest. Oh, I don't think that's a good thing. I say this without humor. What the hell is that? <laughs> Put it out of its misery. Okay, stand back in case it explodes like the others. Hang on. And he'll have Jade, uh, Hamunky Jade, do some force attacks from a distance. Right, with a few force attacks, the first one splits open the corpse of this, uh, this demonic creature. And inside, this same sort of larva-like thing that has a humanoid face just sort of <laughs> comes up and its eyes roll back and it falls to the ground limp and then it just sort of disintegrates and from within this creature there was a brief green glow that then dies away and all that is left is the corpse of this creature I shudder yeah. to think what these things would become if we didn't destroy them now. Oh, de oh definitely, my boy. Do um, do we... So you said no recognition of the statue. Uh, it's going to take a check from somebody. Well, I will have a look. Oh, just, what uh, so it's going to be like? religion. Religion. Anyone else got religion? Uh, Cordelia is looking I do. at it. Cordelia is looking at it with um, with interest. I have religion. Okay. What's your skill? Sekhmet is religion. Yeah. I she, am religion, you're she right. Is, she is a god. What's your plus? Three. Do you want to aid me? Yep. Oh. Oh, fuck, so I rolled a nine and a ten. Uh, Fifteen, max. Um, well, the wings on this creature definitely suggest that it is a devil. Um, and you've heard of devils that are worshipped as sort of demigods. Um, they tend to be um, creatures of great importance in the Nine Hells, 
who this one is in particular, we're not exactly sure. What? Not oh. quite in your area of expertise as a druid. Mm. However, Cordelia looks at it and says, I think that's Zariel. Who's Zari? What? Who's that? She's the Lord of Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells. Oh my god, always with the layer of this and layer of that. There are all a bunch of petty bitches fighting over scraps. Hmm. I swear. Not that dissimilar from the rest of us, then. <laughs> Not at all. You're right, Cordelia. But really, I mean, I can only imagine if you were down in Avernus how easy it would be to pick off one of these. There's like hundreds of them. Why is that one not disappear? It doesn't look like those things we were fighting cared for her very much. I'm going to do a quick survey of the room, Sean. Does it look like there are any hidden uh, hidden doors or exits on uh, in these walls? You may make an investigation check. Two! That would be a ten. Passive is eighteen. Doesn't uh, your your passive has not picked up anything, and okay. um, your poor roll has also not picked up anything. What are you looking for this time, Artie? I, I, I Each know. time you do these investigation checks, it's about twenty minutes. Oh, okay. I mean, I, just like I can just look around. I can just look around and see if I see anything, and I probably don't. You're definitely alone, as far as you can tell. I'm gonna go check the body. I think the less time we spend in here, the better. Yeah. I'm gonna check the body, knowing that they should have disappeared. Hmm. Very I'll well. Poke it with my um, staff. Make a uh, a nature check or a medicine check. Your choice. Nature. Hmm. Nature. Oh, natural one. <laughs> You've never seen anything like this before. Some sort of parasite, perhaps. Um, although it, it boggles your mind as to what all must have been involved, um, nothing in nature would have behaved like this. Um, which, of course, even the things that just disintegrate upon death, that, uh, that's also something that is quite outside your purview. Uh, uh, where should we go now? I guess I was looking for a different path because I didn't want to go into the room that we skipped. That word makes me nervous, but... I, I, I don't think we have a choice now. I'm worried about the orb on the way back that way, too. Wasn't... I think we've... Didn't we just... Oh, I think we just destroyed you have destroyed every orb that you've come through. Um, I'll go ahead oh, and... I, I think Sekhmet's got... right. We we don't know where these orbs come from. They could come back. There could be someone walking around behind us putting more in. And they were uh, feeding into is... each other as far as right? it seemed there's, to be. There's probably some big swollen ball of hate in here somewhere. Should and we... its name is Cordelia. <laughs> should we, uh, should we backtrack and open that door? <laughs> what is the only one? Did we check all the the upstairs and downstairs areas? We've only found one staircase that leads mm. up, and that is the large one that is here directly to the south. That is a tower that goes up um, about thirty feet. And that is where, when you initially arrived at this area, that appeared to be a place you could potentially dock and gain access to the, um, uh, the citadel. Listen, I know, Zell, that you were really not wanting to go into the omelet room, but I think we can. I think it's the only room left. It's, it's, it's Oubliette, Jackster. But I, close what? enough. Nothing. Forget it. Um... I think that's the where breakfast we must go. nook, right? Yes. Uh, yes, Jackster. Yeah. Let's go find the breakfast nook. Let's. As we're walking, um, uh, Artem is going to kind of pull on Jackster's shirt and he'll say, I, I know growing up wasn't the easiest for you, but you've got to be worried about your family, aren't you? I am. I am. My family wasn't the problem. They couldn't help that I was such an incredible disappointment for them and everything they stand for. It's not their fault. But it is the house that I grew up in. It is. Those are the fields that I ran through, and those are the people that I know. And 
Even after my incredible disappointment to them, they welcome me back again and again. And if there's fighting going on, then I should be there. Can I overhear this conversation? Um, did it's you make any effort to keep it si- no. si- silent? Doesn't sound like you did. No. no. Check starts. Not your fault either. I hope you know. What's not my fault? The battle? I have no idea what's attacking them, so I know that's not my fault. I mean, I don't think anyone's hunting me right now. No, you you being the disappointment of the family. I I don't. Shh. I think that's, that's okay. why he hangs out with us. None of us think he's a disappointment. As long as you know that, Jexter. Come on. Uh, of course I do, and don't worry. Everyone, I'm sure we'll find a lovely treasure chest any minute with fabulous things, and I'll make sure that you get your portion to stay with me. As you're coming through this room, um, Zelmira looks down, and now this area where the uh, large demon that you fought was is now, uh, there's no sign of it other than maybe a little bit of a disgusting scent in the air. She looks down, and the large sort of fork that it was carrying, this two two bladed, uh, like a not a trident because it doesn't have three, but it's like two spires on the end of a um, of a long uh, staff. Is lying there. And she sort of kicks it and goes, ding, 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 over to the side as she walks walks by it. Doing so, uh, thing could be cursed. Demonic. She looks at you and then looks at her mouth and points to her mouth and is like, <laughs> "Heard him can't help but." giggle a little bit. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's not funny. Is 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 the split pitch fork thing, is it doing anything unusual? Is it... It's, just... No, nothing nothing unusual. It's uh, sitting there. There's to be just, uh, just what the creature was using to attack you with reach. What's it oh. made of? Um, you may make a perception check. Is it magical? I may. Is it secret? Is it safe? With a roll of an 18, I can make a perception. Um, as uh, Zelmira kicked it, it uh, definitely had a clang sound. It appears to be made of some sort of metal. You look at it, it looks very corroded. It's sort of black, like a like a rusted covered, rust covered um, metal. But looking at it closer with an 18, you see little micros, micro fissures in the... Um, in the uh, rust, and you realize the rust is not actually rust; it's just lumpy and textured. Some looks like pitted iron, um, and then there is, in between little cracks, a little faint glow coming through, almost as if um, there is a core in this um, item that is made of some sort of molten hot uh, metal um, that is sort of glowing through a film of darker material and it, the entire substance the entire weapon is made of the substance if i reach my hand close to it does it get hotter or do i feel anything it doesn't get hotter but you feel that it is dangerous nonetheless there's a sense of unease this I feels like bad magic breaks. Bad juju. The next feels like I, bad magic. The next time I cast detect magic, I'll, I'll take a look at it. But don't don't touch it, Jexter. Be careful. No, I don't think I will. Hmm. Segment's very curious. <laughs> if he sees you going to it, he'll like reach out <laughs> and try to not grab your tail, but grab, <laughs> grab something. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Hey. Hold you back. <laughs> <laughs> Artem knows no. <laughs> no. Beware the rapid paw. <laughs> um, where are you going and what are you doing? We're moving to the... Going to the omelet. The dull omelet. <laughs> At the other end of this hallway, back where you were before, there is the single door that you have not yet entered, and above it, written in common, is the word oubliette. Okay. I open it. Open the door. Um, there is a very short hallway that curves to the south, and there is a circular um, opening with a metal covering over the top as a handle. 
Well, do you, do you want to check if it's trap, boy? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Artem will move forward and uh, his pinky finger will extend and kind of break into a whole bunch of tiny tools and they will kind of pick around uh, some of the gaps in the lever. And All right. I will check uh, for that. Go for it. Uh, 15 plus 8, 23. Does not appear to be trapped, although you think it might be very heavy. Oh, um, I might need some help. Sally, do you think you'd be able to... Um, she looks down and like, looks at the rest of you. Comes forward and reaches down, grabs hold of the whole handle and using the legs and not the back. She successfully lifts it and there's a squeal as metal that probably hasn't moved in decades. And you see a spiral staircase that descends downward into darkness. Oh, why does it have to be down? <laughs> why does it have to be dark? I will cast light on my staff. All right. Well, I again. guess you just answered your own question, Belitis. Uh, it doesn't have to be dark. Uh, we could bring the light with us. A uh, light akin to a torch just sort of extends from Belitis's staff and shines down into a pit. Um, from where you stand, it looks like it's about 40 feet down. Uh, a spiral uh, staircase going the entire way appears to be in one corner of this pit. I'll go first. All right. I'll head down. Down you go. Um, the uh, spiral staircase is extremely narrow, um, but with care, you're able to make it down without too much trouble. You hold your light out in front of you and cast in this room. It's about 20 by 20 feet in um, size. Um, there is a large pool of water on one corner opposite of where you're entering. The spiral staircase comes down on one corner of this roughly square room, and then there is a pool of water on the other corner. Um, and you can see what appears to be a chain and a corpse in another corner. And then along the southern wall, a great deal of debris and rock as there appears to be a passageway that leads further south. You say corpse, is it like skeleton or fresh um, or? Well, where are you? I Still be, on the uh, stairs? I will be there. Right, make a perception check uh, or a, a medicine check. Your choice. Perception. All right. The plus six, dirty 20. Dirty 20. So looking at this, it appears to be a long dead corpse. Um, dressed in rags, from what you can tell. Although with uh, your dirty 20, you can tell that at one point, this might have been very fine clothing. With the uh, perception of 20, you also see scratched into the wall above where this uh, corpse is chained is a message. And it says, I would rather die of thirst than live one second ignorant of your love. Oh. Hard way to make a love declaration. What does the pool look like, Sean, if I got a little closer to it? Um, you may make a perception or investigation check as you come. Not a 20 minute investigation check, right? Well, if you just want to look and see what it looks like, then it's a perception check. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. Well, the thing that is the most apparent about this water is that it is 
red, a uh, deep red, almost a blood red. And looking at it, it has a sort of an oily film to it. Um, and the way it sits in the pool, um, oh god, you don't, don't touch it. Water. <laughs> What, say it again, Sean. You don't think it's actually water? I mean, it, it might be water, but it seems to be a little thicker than water. Artem, don't touch it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch Listen it. Listen to me. This just reeks of magic. I swear, I wish I was allergic to it so I could sneeze whenever some bastard wizard laid some trap. This reads like a warning. I just... I... I give Listen, me just... if you... I'm telling you, this is the sort of stupid little puzzle that they would play on me. Listen to me, Arnie. And Zelly, back me up on this. I would rather die of thirst than live one second ignorant of your love. I bet if you touch that crap, you'll forget something. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's the it's built into the work. Oh, thanks. Cordelia looks at it, she says. The sticks. No, it's water. <laughs> Not sticks like from a tree, idiot. It's the river sticks. You're so harsh. Do you think that's what that water is? Uh, what is it here? So what if it is? What, what does that have to do with anything? Makes sense what you just said and the message that's there. Wait, did she just compliment me? No, that can't be right. What are, what are you saying, Cordelia? What do you mean? None of you have heard of the river sticks? I'm assuming we have. I would... But would, is that, would that be a history check, Sean? Yeah. Or religion. Uh, Does anybody else uh, want religion. to roll? <laughs> religion. Yeah, I've 15. got... Religion. Was that a history or religion? Our choice or history? Yes, history, no, not history or religion, religion. Your choice. Am I allowed to roll as well, or is we already got to roll? Do it. A Fifteen. Do it. Fifteen from Jexter. Um. Ooh, Sekhmet. Is one from Sekhmet. Uh, so, history. Um, this is going to reflect stories that you've heard, Jexter. The River Styx uh, figures very heavily in many of them. A a body of water that is makes appearance in numerous tales uh, of areas of the outer plains. It's never clear whether or not it's the same river or just different rivers that have the same name, but they all have a similar quality, all red and all seem to be cursed with the ability to drain someone of all of their memory and knowledge. Um, Sekhmet with the 21 religion. I you believe know. I'm familiar with this river. Yes, the river uh, is, in fact, one single river. It's one of the only things that directly connects several planes of existence together, um, notably Gehenna, um, uh, the Abyss, and the Hells. Uh, the river Styx flows through all of them. In fact, actually flows through all the layers of the Hells. If you are, have the proper vessel, you can travel through these different planes of existence by traversing the river Styx. And you would definitely know it is extremely dangerous. Anybody who drinks of the water or for that matter, even touches it is said to run the risk of losing all knowledge of self. Thanks, Jexter. I, I, I believe there's a similar lore where I come from. Now, if we could find a way to just get like a little drop of this and I could forget a few people, that I'll take. It won't work like that. No? I understand. Because I know a few people that I wish I could forget. <laughs> Present company excluded? Of course. You can't guarantee it won't rid of you of us as well. I know, that's why I didn't want Artie to forget me. Anyone here? Let me check the body. I'll go closer to the body. Check the body. Mm -hmm. You say it's female. chained up, yeah? It definitely was female. Um, chained, but of course the chains have... The, the body has uh, dried up and... Um, appears to have been dead for some time. You want to roll a medicine check if you want to know for how long. 
implements. It isn't my forte, but I will roll it. A seven. Seven. <laughs> definitely, definitely not recent. Um, oh, it's dead. <laughs> Are there any, uh, like, vials around? Any... Well, make a perception or investigation check. Your choice. I have a bunch of vials. But I'm... After your... After your, uh, description, Artem is rather reluctant to get anywhere close to it. Uh, 17. Perception. 17. You look around... You don't see any vials. Um, however, there are numerous bones, um, small, uh, like rodent-sized bones. And there's also on on the far corner here. Um, it looks like there is a place in the wall where another chain might have been, although it is missing. Are. And this here Art is an open cavern sort of area. It yeah. is. Artem, did you say you had some empty vials? But if it's as powerful as you say, I think there's just too much chance for accident. I think you we know? should leave it there. I think it could be of use to us. In a time if you really world. want it, I'll try to get it. I'm no, Andy. Let me. I. I've got the tools to siphon. Um, we don't need much. I, I, Jexter, I don't, I don't want you. Come on, don't you remember that one time I swapped out the potions for that baddie right in the middle of combat? I could do these things. That's a bad idea. I'm willing to not risk things. Good. For your let's, safety, let's Jackson. move on then. <laughs> Go on. I'm going to move to this clack in the... Alrighty. I'm going to move to this um, clack in, I mean clack in the wall. So are we, are we getting the, some of this water or no? It sounded to me like... <laughs> Believe Art of his no. reluctance. <laughs> Sweet, but I mean... just leaves it. I believe I'm stealthy. <laughs> Ooh, be careful. Can I get a vial from Art? <laughs> You want to pick? You want a sleight of hand, a vial from Artem? Go for it. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh <laughs> man! Put your roll there, Sekhmet. I got a four. <laughs> no, you so you clawed me. One. <laughs> so I am ow. angry at you. I wasn't trying to steal it. I'm just letting you know. I think it could have been of use against our enemies. That's all. Artie, you should let me carry one. If we have not all getting of those one. In let's place. go. You should let me carry one. You should really let me carry one, Artie. We're not getting one, Jexter. We want one. I think let I'm get going it. to get one. I'm working, making, making my way downtown. I don't think it's wise for Jexter hole. to carry it. I can't even I'm get on there properly. Let's go, Because... It is our job to protect him and to guard him, not put him at risk. It's not your job anymore. It's not your job. If you're doing it, it's because you're It is not to. my job. It is why I exist. Can you call me? What do wow. you need for? Pretty deep. What do you want with something that can make you forget, Jaxter? You never know when something like that could come in handy. If this is really from River Styx, that's pretty cool. I say we let him try it. I'm going to make an insight check on you, Jexter. <laughs> if that's all right, Sean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's see what you roll. 21. So, what is it that you're, what you've is it said, that you're inciting? Yeah, it was, if, if anything you've said is uh, misleading or if you were hiding anything, then roll a deception check. You had made a passive comment about wanting to forget. I'm making sure that that's not why you actually want the liquid. No, with, with a roll of a 21 and based on our months of adventuring together, <coughs> you would know that. Jexter just wants to do it 
because he thinks he can. Come on, Jexter, let's keep going. Remember your castle? Uh, I'm right. stuck at the cave. See, I got too close to the water and I forgot stuff. We need to get out of here. We Could be misting going. us as we speak. <laughs> We're following Belitis. All right. I'm, I'm stuck. Can, we... Can you move my shell a bit? I mean, despite, oh, sweet it, it, despite everything, the, the water does smell absolutely horrible. So the idea of drinking it is it's a pretty rough one. Uh, so you come to an opening um, <laughs> as you're moving through, Belitis. Uh, it is, you can't help but notice, uh, this appears to have been carved out by some small tool, one little section at a time. Um, what kind of tool, you're not sure, but... A spoon. And you eventually come to an opening, and as you do, you get the sense that you're coming to an area that might be open, not only in terms of the size of the cavern, but also open to the outside. Not a breeze per se, but a slight lightning as you come around the corner. Um, and you see that it does in fact open up into a chamber and the eastern end of it is completely open to the astral sea. And in one corner of it, wearing a chain around his neck um, that is worn down link by link by link until only a few links remain is a emaciated and staring half-elf with long gray hair, gray beard, wearing the remnants of what must have one time have been very fine clothing, um, gazing out upon the astral sea. Is it alive? Uh, you may make a perception check. I look at it to see if it is alive, and with my so you... mighty perception score, I roll a nine. <laughs> I rolled a nineteen. Total. You do see slight movement in the chest as he breathes. Uh... Belitis, is it alive? <laughs> it's definitely alive. <laughs> Hello? Uh -huh. Oh, God, somewhat what clouded over. Does it smell like it's the undead? Um, it smells horrible. <laughs> um, does it smell like But it does not smell with that particular flavor of undead. You don't think so. Oh, For... close to it. For a message to work, I have to speak out loud, right? It is does but, have a, a verbal component. I've always assumed that means it is a that's what you say. You know, it doesn't say anything about telepathy, so Right. Does that. does the person I send the message to also have to speak out loud to Wait, to does it work it. both ways? To answer it, they would have to speak out loud. Out loud as well. Okay. So if they're not capable, then it wouldn't matter. I'll go and check his pulse. As you get closer, he makes a very weak effort to scramble away. Sort of moves hands on the wall and scooches away but clearly doesn't have any energy and as he does a bunch of bones scatter away from him um appears he's been feeding upon rats i step forward and kneel down and i say let me help you let me let me help you feel that <laughs> do you understand me <laughs> Can I DM? Can I see? Does he have a tongue? He does have a tongue. Can I check his like health status somehow? Uh, you may make a perception check or a medicine check. Fifteen. Oh, uh, very, very undernourished. Mm. Uh, and Artem will dig out a ration and yeah. offer him some water. Uh, he sees the food and immediately just animalistically just dives at it. Just ah, his eyes are wide and his mouth just and he just grabs the food out of your hand, <laughs> devours it, and then scoots over to another side of the room, just looking at you all. Can I give him some healing? See if that he doesn't appear to be wounded. Oh, okay. Even malnourishment doesn't 
No. It has no. to be a wound to give any kind of healing. Okay. Ekmet, are you able to talk to him? You know, that way? Huh. Um... Do you, do you mean telepathically? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. What spell are you thinking about casting? I mean, I have message. message. But I can, guys. I think that's if just he'll speak talking. to us. I can make sure he understands what I'm saying. I have. Words. Oh. Why don't we just ask him if he can understand us? I tried that. Well, Marty, you <laughs> Try, again. <laughs> Try again. Try <laughs> again. Do you understand us? He's looking at you, apparently looking to see if there's any more food. Could you, you have one of those berries? I don't. I, just, I didn't do that one this morning. I, I do need to rest. I give just another small bit of ration. Leaps forward and grabs it out of your hand almost before you can think and skitters over to the corner again. <laughs> Eats it. Is he firmly chained, DM? He has a chain around his neck that ends in links that are not connected to anything. And the last link on the chain looks very worn, like it's been used to perhaps dig a tunnel. It, just let, let, uh, let me help you, okay? And I'm gonna drool. Just runs from his mouth and just. If you can stay still, I'll give you another ration. Just uh, let uh, let let me help you. Be calm. Uh, <laughs> And I'm going to come and uh, using my thieves tools, I'm going to try to break the chain around his neck. Okay. Um, it does not appear to be locked. It appears to have been forged around his neck. Oh, God. So there's there's no way to break it. Using... Correct. And I mean, he's not, it's not restraining him at all. It's not connected to anything. It's just. No, just for his comfort. It was, there's it was... got to be like sores around his neck, though. No, oh, he's, he's a mess. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look at him and I'll try to examine it and, oh, oh, he's had this for a really long time. Huh. And I'll rip a piece of cloth and just put it around the inside just to make it a little bit more As you go for his neck, he slaps away your hands and just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Listen, Here. you... Do you understand us? Can you hear us? I clap my hands to him to see if he hears it. I'm sorry, is he human? Did we establish he's he human? He appears to be half elven. Half elven, okay. DM, when I clapped my hands, did he appear to react? He did. He looks at you clapping your hands, his eyes narrow, and he sort of backs away. Does anyone speak elven to try to communicate differently with him? I speak Elvish. Do you understand us? Same, just heavy breathing, eyes darting. I speak Dwarvish. Do you understand this? Same can response. He, can he hear? He can hear. I clapped, so. Okay. He twitched. DM, you said he did respond or does not? He does. He did respond to the clapping. Mm -hmm. What about the Dwarvish? He has not responded to a single spoken thing anyone has said. Um, Do we have any way to know if that thing's magic? That's a question to the group. The yeah. collar? Yeah. Give me, give me, give me ten minutes. And uh, I will... What do you want us to do? Cast... Just sing Kumbaya? Artie, come on. What if, what's the floor like here? Is it, this is a cave, right? It appears to be some, like, a bit of this cave might have been a natural fissure uh, that has opened up like a sort of a indentation in the rock um, that you can look out and see the astral sea beyond. Um, I should go ahead and show well, you that. What's the ground like? That's what I, can it's I like? It's stone. It's stone. So this area right here, 
uh, is open to the astral sea, like just sort of a big bay window as you stand there. He was okay, gazing okay. out it as you um, as you'd entered. Can I like you can actually see across the way here uh, the um, the tower that is extending out underneath it the the uh, large rock rocky portion that uh, that uh, supports the citadel mm-hmm. uh, disappearing descending about 200 feet below. I'm going to see if I can figure this fellow out, guys. If um... would he understand pictures? Always going back to the hieroglyphics, Sekhmet. <sighs> the original language. Hello. Just give me a moment. Give me a moment. Let me let me say a few words. DM, I cast. Detect thoughts. Ooh. I can read the thoughts of certain creatures. Uh, that would be him. That's what I'm focusing on. If he has an intelligence of three or lower, it doesn't work. Surface thoughts first. You can detect that there is thinking coming from all of your companions. And that is all. Ooh. When I look at him, am I able to get anything? The spell has no effect. I turn and look at everyone. That's it. He drank. Cordelia that water. Oh, that oh. makes sense. There's nothing there. <laughs> and Jackster figures. Sorry. <laughs> Cordelia knows. That's exactly what happened. Someone threw them down there with just enough chain so that they could reach the water and no other source. And the woman died of thirst. I come out praise for him. A man and a woman. That message. They weren't just in prison. They were punished. <laughs> you should put this fellow out of his mi- misery. He wouldn't know any better, to be honest. I think you're right. Zelda gets... looks at all of you and like, shakes her head. She's like, looks at you, Artem, and is like, wide eyed. It's still a life, guys. Is it... Even if it doesn't remember. It's a it's... shell of one right now. But it's not evil. It's not evil, but it's non existent. It What's wouldn't it? have this in the other world. What's it kind of about the lies, boy? Back. Hold on just a moment. There's one there's one more thing I can try. Cause even even animals, even babies when they're first brought into this world. Ugh, why would anyone do that? They can understand certain things. They can understand if you're trying to be nice to them. DM, I'm going to invoke special ability, universal speech. A creature can magically understand me. All right. Regardless of the language that I speak, and I'm going to try to communicate. I've got how long? Uh, uh, for one, one hour. hour. One hour. I'm going to first start to try to communicate that we don't want to hurt him. We want to help him. We can help him. Uh, the same way that you would try to impress this, not just speaking, we're here to help you. Just, But try to impress more with emotions and feelings than spoken words. Using With the aid of your magic, ability. you are able to make yourself understood to him. And after a while, he begins to calm down and he sort of sits and scratches himself absent-mindedly and looks at you all with sort of a 
blasé expression. Um, he looks at you quizzically a couple of times. And he keeps looking around for more food. Um, very similar to perhaps a stray dog that you may have befriended. Can't take Ready this Ready to life. run, but convinced of the fact that it's not with anybody that's going to hurt him. Not, no, like, specific healing spells are any good for magic, right? You may make a religion or arcana check, if you wish. Let's, let's like, actually roll some die for this one. Rolling arcana. And that is a... 21. 21. On my crack and die. If... What Cordelia and Jexer have said is true, and this is the river, water from the river Styx, mm -hmm. then it is powerful on a level that is difficult for mortals to comprehend. And only the truly most powerful arch mages would be capable of undoing it. Hmm, kind of like my health. That's great. No. <laughs> stronger than Even that, I know. <laughs> A spell that could bend the very fabric of reality on a level that would seem almost godly to most practitioners of magic. Artem. Come here. I do. Quietly, I get up really close to Artem. I really think you need to go hug Zalia right about now. And Artem nods and he moves to his sister and he, the way he hugs her is he stands to the side of her and he puts his arm around her shoulder and he wraps his tail around her waist. <laughs> she looks at down at you and then she Ooh. looks over at Chexter and she looks at this poor creature and then shuts her eyes and sort of moves her this stinging proboscis in such a way that it's not touching you, but she is looking away. I pray to Osiris to accept him and escort him to the other side. Very well. Is that a euphemism for you knife him? Have him. <laughs> We we can't we can't we can't kill him. Do we draw straws? How do we? No. <laughs> Who pulls the trigger? <laughs> we have to take him with us. We do. Artie's right. Oh, we'll I thought we were. Can... I thought you told him to hug her because we were gonna. <laughs> oh no. No. That's what she thought more... too. That's what I thought. Okay, Sekhmet and Cordelia need to hang out together. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, they're both... are dark. Woo, girl. We're heading there. <laughs> So what I do, I, I heal life, I take life. It's, it's all or nothing. <laughs> you get all or nothing here. <laughs> I'm going to look out into the astral sea and see if I can see anything around the corners or... Make a perception check. <clears throat> anything. I take back my prayer. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, so I here, accept the blessings two. of my so God. Eight. <laughs> it, oh, that God, that could all still happen. An eight? Yeah. It's nothing. You can't see a thing out there. It is oh. just swirling, gray, featureless void. Oh, silly me. My eyes were closed. I'll try again. Um, okay, I'll just go and take a seat. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no trying again in D&D. &D. <laughs> There's no I, trying uh, in baseball. <laughs> I take a seat. I think we need to rest. Yeah. Yeah, I know you need to get back, boy, but I don't know where that way back is. Unless, unless we go back to the boat. I think if we're that depleted, it wouldn't be a bad idea to pause. But it's up to you, Jexter. I'll press on if that's what you want. Rest wouldn't hurt us, but I'm, I'm. I 
this is... It's bad. You said that was the River Styx, but... This is all wrong. What do you mean? Huh. We've encountered nothing but demons or devils. Things coming at us, attacking us, transforming, defaced idols. I don't know what to That out it. there looks like the Astral Sea, but I'm really starting to wonder where we are. Now I spent so much time studying the other side. I It's not it's not my time to to visit there yet. Was that was that was that Cochrane not... calling? Why don't we give that the gnome the gnome a call? What pebble moss? Yes. What was the last Do time we, have we spoke any of you to him? Have the spell sending. I thought we had something. I don't. But he was messaging us with. He that messaged. Was, that's us. the other game. Ah. Oh. God he's damn it! You. I mean, too many games. Good old <laughs> Father Corcoran Pebble Moss. That twisted little. What is he? A gnome? He is a gnome. He's a twisted little gnome with his little books and things, but I don't think we can get to him from here. Oh. Well. Oh, what are you doing, friends? Yeah. I, I have to wonder if between uh, uh, Cordelia's obvious preferences towards Cleric of the Grave, Angel of Death, etc., etc., and this fellow having had his mind completely wiped beyond restoration and clawing his way out with a link of a chain over God knows how long it would take I have to be wondering if if there might be a, um, a bad moment coming in this game. <laughs> you think? Think? Who would do that? I don't know, but that doesn't answer my question. What are you guys doing? We've been we're trying to figure out what we're here, doing. <laughs> The thing is, hasn't this place got like multiple floors? We've only checked one floor. The only other that place that we haven't that. seen, and I saw through Hamunky Jade's eyes, was up the tower. And that yeah. was just the docking entrance, if I remember correctly, Sean. There's nothing mm -hmm. of consequence up there. You have not discovered any way to access the upper levels so far. Um, hmm. I, I say we, I say we rest. Maybe, maybe not with the water. No, no. Let's, let's give our new friend a different environment. And I will, uh, I will gently take him by the chain and I will lead him out upstairs he looks back at J Jexter as you do <laughs> clearly preferring to stay with Jexter who he has had communication with in some form here I'll bring him along it's, and assuming it's been less than an hour I'll convince him to just that, that everyone here well I won't convince him of that most of us here don't want to hurt him he should follow us. Um, you know... Artem. Yeah. And Sekhmet. When I said earlier that it's always the summoners... Now, Artem, you work with tools and things, but Sekhmet, coming from the Divine Realm, in order to get places, you can't just 
go always by yourself. Don't you have to, like summoners, they summon things, right? Yeah. And always when they do, they have to have the special things. It's one of the ways I used to spot traps. Stupid little markings and runes over doors. Stupid little circles. In the portal. That one big beastie that didn't even fit in here. How did he get here? Oh, that's a, that was a, a plane shift portal at the beginning. No, he came from that room. He uh, came down that hall. I mean, he could have just walked there. He's got legs. The the way the doors are were destroyed, it looked very cleanly that he had come from the same room that you had. Um, the room that has this teleportation por uh, por uh, portal and the large statue that I believe somebody determined was uh, Osmodeus. Nice. Yeah. The other room, the chapel, seemed to have a, um, a statue of uh, what Cordelia said is Zariel. What are these two I'm things? They look like they're glowing, got circles around them. There were four <laughs> sources of light, right? Uh, Up mm -hmm. at the top. Um, I'm just... This is not a place people just pull up to in their carriages. Are you suggesting we activate the portal, Jexter? Oh, I'm asking if we if if there's a way. I've been thinking about it. Give me a second. And Artem will run there's upstairs. There's some there's always some tool involved, Artem. That's why I brought it up to you. There's some stupid tool. I'm Catching, I'm casting detect magic over the fork. Uh, the fork does radiate magic. What type of magic? Um, there is. Uh, ooh, good question. Yeah, everybody keeps telling me don't touch that. Don't get that magic water that erases your mind. I'm telling you. I'm going to say uh, it registers a bit of evocation and a bit of transmutation. Would I know that to be a tool that could potentially? Activate well, anything can be a tool. It just, you know, depends on what the uh, what the job is. It's not. Is it cursed? The book that I have that ritually cast would tell you if it is. It does not appear to be cursed. All right, then I will. Uh, uh, well, uh, you would have to be identify to determine that. Detect magic doesn't detect if something is cursed. But oh, you I thought that's what free. the book did. I thought that's what the book did. The book does if you use it to cast identify. Ah, okay. Then detect that's magic. What I'll do. Detect magic from the book would um, would detect magic even if it was being hidden by something like Nistel's magic aura or something I like see, that. I see. I see. In that you case, you just have to try another spell. <laughs> just you don't do just identify. Get it right on the first try. That's right. That's right. All right. So this is a plus one um, fork. It works the same way as a pike. Um, it is a hellfire weapon. Any uh, humanoid that is slain by it, their soul is immediately sent to hell and reborn as a lemur, the lowest form of devil. Oh, God. That's like those wormy things with the faces. Nobody used this to kill anything. Uh, Would I know it, it to it be to a sea. potential tool? Uh, make an intelligence check. I can do that. It looks like the most wretched type of tuning fork I've ever seen, and I have seen some wretched tuning forks. It's a 14, Sean. A 14 is enough uh, for you to remember the recent past. Uh, the statue of Asmodeus has one hand, his left hand extended out towards you, beckoning. His right hand appeared to need something placed in it. I will take the tool, or I'll take the, I'll take the fork, and I will just place it in his hand i won't discuss I just when you go it back out. into the room you see floating around the um some of them on the ground and some of them floating around the um uh the boat um numerous of the uh, versions of the tiny little creatures that came at you from behind when you were fighting the large demon and his um sort of pig-like um companions um, the boat appears to have sustained some damage, um, and flying around the boat, moving back and forth and breathing sparkly, uh, breaths of power upon these creatures, one after another, sort of moving around, clearly working very hard are, uh, 
um, Ashenbon and Ashenmal. Um, it seems like every single time you see one of these creatures begin to sort of stir um, and make their way onto the boat, they get blasted by one of these blasts from the fairy dragon. And they see you, look at this, they say, oh, oh, thank goodness you're back. These things, they just came and started ripping up the ship. We're doing our best, but please help us. Yeah, yeah. And I'll Let's just go. start firebolting them. All it's right. Uh, the ones that are, if you just sort of stand there and firebolt, uh, as they move back and forth, I'll go ahead and show you where they all are. So the ones that are floating out, you know, there looks like some have actually fallen off of the ship and are floating in the astral sea. And every now and then they shake their heads and start coming back. Sometimes they turn invisible and you see um, some of them trying to hit the fairy dragons, um, but missing. Fairy dragons are very difficult to hit and they also stay invisible themselves. Um, and so with those of you who have ranged attacks, you're able to one by one pick off these creatures. Um, but it appears that the damage has been done. Is the boat unusable? Uh, you may go check it out. Uh, I will do that, I guess. Um, to exhaust As we were it. going back through, uh, just a little mm -hmm. tiny bit of, as we were going back through bringing this dude with no brain. I wanted to look again at the other body to see if there's anything identifying at all, any sort of ring, any sort of, you know, name sewn onto the inside of the cloth, anything. You should uh, make an investigation check. As Cordelia stands there looking down, observing this. That's an actual one. She looks at you and says, we should just kill him. It'd be a mercy. We don't even know who he is. Why would that matter? The gods know, and that's all that matters. This is a private conversation between Cordelia and Jexter. Just kidding, I oh said. Oh boy. <laughs> it's forgotten all sense of who he ever was or ever did. He's practically dead. This is exactly the sort of situation that my faith exists for. Well, I don't know what type of surprises are waiting for us up there. But I'm fairly certain you'll be the last one to leave the room, Cordelia. I'm not going to kill him. I'm just saying that we should. Shamsil wouldn't have wanted us to. But then he's dead, too. You really and shouldn't she say that. goes up. Then I'll drag him up, and then we'll do the scene with the boat. Okay. <laughs> so he's not dead. Did I? But I didn't find anything. I'm... No, with a natural one, you you did not, unfortunately. Fine. She the dice rings. tell a story, and sometimes that story is fuck you. <laughs> it's too real. Shit, like God knows how many rings. Anyway, of so and... uh, you enter in to see um, Artem and Belitis and Sechmet um, and um, Zelmira all. Uh, just laying waste to this swarm of, for the most part, helpless uh, little demon creatures that as each one of them dies, there's a sort of a disgusting uh, display of uh, their ichor that comes out. And uh, two very exhausted fairy dragons that um, briefly appear in front of you and I thought you'd never get here. We're very tired. And they then turn invisible, and you assume they're nearby, but you can no longer see them. And now, Artem, to... if you would like to observe the ship. Yes. How uh, how badly is it damaged? It looks like, despite their best efforts, the fairy dragons were not able to keep the demons from ripping at some of the um, of the sails, which looked like they could possibly be mended. 
but the real loss is the tiller, which has been completely broken and just ripped out from the center portion of the of the uh, of the prow of the ship. Stuck. You can fix it, Artie. Come on. Uh, does it look like something that I can fix, Sean? Anything's possible. But if this were a normal boat, no problem. But this is to be able to extend your senses the way you've been with the uh, with the boat. Um, it's possible. I can, I can try. Huh. You guys rest. I'll, I'll work on it. Let's see what we can do over the course. Let's give it an hour. An hour. So this is a short rest for everyone? Yeah, it doesn't do nothing for me. All right, so short rests all around, as Artem does not short rest, and instead spends an hour looking at this. Artem, this is an incredibly difficult task. Um, there's... You're essentially fixing a magic item that you have never seen constructed nor seen schematics for. All you know is that if you move it in a certain way, it works. So you may make a, let's see. What tools do you have at your disposal? I have thieves tools, alchemy tools, and cooking tools. I could create a set of tools in the course of an hour. Um, All right. Yeah, you could create. You, you. Uh, what type of tools does Artem think he would need to fix this? Oh God. Um, the only thing that I could think of is if the magic itself is intact, then I would have to do some sort of smithing tools to repair the mechanism and reconnect it to whatever source of magic is powering it. Let's call it shipwright's tools. Okay. So, so you spend an hour, an hour crafting a shipwright's tools, and at the end of that hour, you may make your check. What, I obviously wouldn't be proficient in it. It would be, what would my... Uh, Are you not proficient in tools be? that you create? I, so no, ZC uh, informed me that it, it would not. I can create the tools and I can use the tools, but, but I do not, not have proficient. proficiency. At, so, uh, um, if you were building a ship, I would say it's probably would be a strength check. But since you are doing this to try and fix a part, portion of the ship that is clearly magic, and we're going to say it's intelligence. So make an intelligence check. Um, you are able to do this because you have the tools, but do not add your proficiency. I am going to use my inspiration on this, Sean. All right. Which inspiration is that? Is that a D20 or a D6? I'm starting with the D20. Go for it. Oh, um, and if, you have uh, to declare before you do, so you... I, and I did, and I did. Uh, and Validus, if you want to guide me. No, oh, I suppose so. I'll guide him. <clears throat> All right. Intelligence check. It's uh, double 19s. Double 19s. Plus... Uh, two, and I will in fact use my d6 inspiration. Very well. This. Yes. Oh, oh what 20, did you roll? I rolled a six. So with all of the thingies, it is a 27. You get very close. Oh. But with enough time, with little instruction, with a schematic, with a book, if you'd seen one being constructed, maybe. But just fixing something like this, unfortunately, not possible. Artem is frustrated and defeated, and he is sitting alone on the ship, quietly crying. Zelmira comes over and puts her hand on your shoulder. I'm sorry, Zelly. Her tail comes around, takes one of your tears, flicks it away, and then 
goes down to your chest. Taps it. I love you too. I wasn't smart enough. I really tried, Zelly, I did. She reaches up like she wants to rip this thing out of her mouth and she just... I know. I'm sorry. I don't like the choice that we have to make, but I think our only way is through. And he points to the circle. She nods her head. I'm scared, silly. I'm scared of what we're going to find. Squeezes your shoulder. And you look up and she... It's a strange sensation seeing this beak-like thing coming out of her mouth, but you can see above it, her eyes look very fierce and determined. I don't know what I'd do without your bravery, Sally. I'm so lucky to be your brother. And he takes the fork and he takes a moment and he looks at every single one of his companions and he just takes a moment to be grateful for all of the adventures that they've had and just offers a silent prayer and puts the fork in Asmodeus' hand. All right. Mm. And it goes. And as it does, there's a clicking sound. As the circle in the middle of the room glows with a bright blue and there's a breeze that emanates from it. The room becomes noticeably warmer and then it fades. Can we see into it? Does it show any of it on the other side? No, it just is a... uh, blue portal. It has not physically changed other than the fact that the light from it glowed for a brief moment. We don't don't know what plane this goes, but we can pretty much guess where. It's either this or we turn into our friend, Belitis. I can't fix the ship. This place is falling apart. This whole place is falling apart everything here I don't mean like the mansion but there's nothing here we're apparently on the astral plane are we not yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a magic I'm not a wizard boy, but can't we change the destination? You said it yourself. You're no wizard. I'm thankful for that, Belitis. Just, I want to put that out there. I'm I'm happy that you're not a wizard. Putting that out there. I don't know how to change the destination, do you? This isn't magic we know. be lucky if we can activate it <laughs> but I, th- I think it's already activated so how do we open it we, we, we will just stand on it I, but I I don't have many spells left let's rest before we go then we don't we know just rested no a, a long rest. I think we need to sleep before we go. I, I'm tired too. I know you don't want to hear it. I know it's not your family, but imagine if it was. This isn't going back to your family, boy. He's right, we, Dexter. We want to get there too. 
Leave me with the... I think the only way to help your family is to keep moving forward. Even if that means moving down. So am I hearing a long rest? I'm, if possible. <laughs> I would I would try to convince everyone otherwise using every means available. Very well. Police will Do push you forward. Allow yourselves to be convinced. Police will push forward if the party needs to. But we'll, yeah, I, if, we'll if you feel that. really, really strongly about it. He can't save anyone. He has, he's got, well, I've got. I've got sorcery points. Uh, I don't got, need those spell slots. I've got four spells left. <clears throat> I've got yeah. four I family members share left. Share my sorcery points. <laughs> Right. You get a point. You get a point. So no long rest then. If that's the I consensus. would do everything I could to convince everyone to move now, including abilities which I have to persuade. Very well. Yep. We're here for Jexter. Segment with Cordelia him. says. I mean, if it's working, what's to stop something from coming through? Well, we take the thing back out. I could do that. What if it doesn't work again? We put it back in. That's what I'm saying. I think we should go. Let's go. Hey. Zilmira nods. I put out a paw. See if anybody takes it to walk forward with me. What about you two mischiefs? And I'll talk to the dragons. We're going with you. Oh no! Oh no! No, it's a good thing. I like our Don't kill the dragon. <laughs> all right, I guess we're all standing on the circle. DM. All right, so you all stand along the edge of the circle, and as you do, you can see that in the center of it there is a shimmering, almost as if there is a heat coming up off of the floor, although you can't see a source of it, but there's a mirage-like effect happening. And you have a feeling, this distinct impression that the floor is actually some sort of water or surface that you could step out onto and pass through. Are you ready? On three. Yeah. Hold my hand. We'll all hold hands. Zell's got you on one hand. She takes Sekhmet's hand. Um, and then on the other side of Sekhmet, Cordelia takes her hand. And then around, so on and so forth. And then you feel something, a light on your shoulder, Artem, as a monkey jade is there. And then on the other side, um, Ashen Bon. And then uh, Jexter on your shoulder, Ashen Mao lights in your shoulder. All right, I've had enough of this place. Let's go. It'll be I've all right. Got my I've also got my friend, my new friend. All right. Drag him in. Oh, no. Are we taking that poor guy? Well, I'm not going to leave him here. No. Got, got to eat uh, something. Really really shakes her head. Well, we don't have to worry about the big ones killing him then. <laughs> Second, and... Matt, come on now. If there's a stray cat, you take it up. Okay. Do you all jump in? Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Three. Do it. In you go. It very much feels like passing through a membrane of water as you move from this area into a more neutral temperature, almost as if you were back in the Astral Sea, although this feels more close. You feel like you're being squeezed. And just at the point where the squeeze is about to change from pressure to pain, it begins to alleviate. And you find your senses returning back to you and almost as if they're slingshotting away and back into your brain from an incredibly far distance as your feet alight on something hard underneath you.
As you take your first breath in this new place, you choke as an acrid mixture of brimstone and decay fills your lungs. Above you, a sky the color of dried gore extends as far distant horizon, and at its terminus there is an orange glow, as if the sun has either just set or is about to rise. You're standing atop a small stone tower, the base of which is about 30 feet below you. The land around you is desolate, a vast desert of dark rock, ash, and sand, scattered with brightly glowing crevices and fissures. Heat rises from the ground in shimmering waves, and you can feel it even standing where you are 30 feet above it. Uh, you can feel it draining on your energy. And if it's this bad up here, you can only imagine what it must feel like to actually walk on the surface of this place. Directly to the south of where you currently stand, extending to the east and west in a long, unending line, is a wide river. A small peninsula juts out from the bank where you currently are, and upon that peninsula sits the tower that you're standing on. The water of this river appears more viscous than na normal water. It is the color of blood, and its surface shimmers with an oily film broken up by grotesque pieces of flotsam. It moves below you as you stand on the tower looking down, and it kind of has a sucking sound, a sort of... as it moves beneath where you currently stand, but you can spare it very little thought because as you gaze down on it, your vision rises and you see on the opposite bank a battle, the likes of which you have never before seen. Fire, destruction, Screams of agony and howls of fury rise up and swirl in a maelstrom of hatred and violence from out of a nightmare. Two vast armies of fiends throw themselves at each other with all of their strength and will tearing into one another. The point of contact between these two armies is a grisly mill of mutual annihilation. Huge behemoths stride forward, swinging fiery blades the size of small trees or brandishing scimitar-like claws that drip with corruption. At their feet, smaller warriors engage, some with the rank and file of vicious discipline, others with berserk abandon. In the sky, swarms of flying creatures clash, dodging meteors from above and blasts of arcane power from below. The tower that you're standing on literally shakes and quivers from the force of the distant conflict. Before you is war in its ultimate form, what all other wars aspire to. The image is forever burned into your mind. It is so primal, so intense, so horrible, and so evil that there is only one place you could possibly be. This is hell. My friends, what do you do? Uh, leave. Leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going back the up. Portal is, that portal. is the portal. <laughs> <laughs> Can I quoting, go back? <laughs> quoting our very own witchy ranger, Ryan, I close the door. Right. <laughs> you are standing here. Where's that? Where's that? That trident. Where... <laughs> is the portal still active? There is a very faint swirling blue circle <laughs> underneath your feet, but it is just swirling there. Oh God, what have I done? Heat is intense. You feel it pressing down. Something, something pressing down on you from the above. It could be heat, but there's heat coming up from below. 
It's almost as if there is a will focusing its energy upon you. Seriously, though, like, Sekma is really feeling her mortality here. Um, that sense of godliness she had always carried and confidently believed is starting to falter a bit here. And the fact that she realizes how <laughs> much health she has been worn down up until this point is just starting to concern her greatly. Um, if you'd be so kind as to put yourselves on the board, my friend. No, nope. thanks. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's Gosh, our campaign. We're, we're not <laughs> uh, that makes um, it real. <laughs> well, no. Oh, where do I? F there I am. I, I suppose I, I have to go back. Your missing oh, companions as well. Every time. There I am. As Zamira moves close to you, and you all kind of stand there back to back, taking in this horrible place and then about 500 to 600 feet away this carnage that's taking place yes Jexter I have not forgotten about <laughs> what's his name his now name that you Zach. have him he must have a name his name is Zach Zach it's actually named Zachriel. Zachriel, all right. It's a name that I was taught by someone. So Zachriel, as <laughs> peers there with you, um, was looking around just wide-eyed, and kind Give of the crawls up. on you and pulls on you, almost as if he's trying to get up onto your shoulders. And you hear uh, Ashen Maul say, Hey, hey, Taken! It's Taken! What the? Where are we? Is that a is that a trap door? Uh, it appears to be a trap door, indeed. I will immediately go to it and and try to pry it open. All right. You uh, you reach it and you are able to pull it up. It opens. Um, it appears to be made of metal. Guys, we 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 have to we have to take cover. Come on. And he'll just. Duck What's in. down there? What's down there? I don't there? know. I don't care. I can't look. What if what's down there is worse than what's up here? Yeah, Artem isn't listening. He's down. Cordelia looks at you with her eyes wide. She's, how could it be worse? I probably shouldn't have said that. Well, my family always told me I was going to hell. Oh. <laughs> So as no, you, no, they plan to send me there. It's as you go down, summoners. Um, this is the second floor. As you come down the staircase, uh, there's a spiral staircase that goes down, and as it does, um, the floor that would have been the second floor of this has been destroyed and lies in rubble at the bottom. Um, and then the staircase continues down. Um, and you are able to exit through this front portion here. Obviously, that doesn't exit directly into the river. It exits onto the peninsula here. But as you are going down, and the rest of you look at Artem, you begin to hear... As out of the water, you see these misshapen lumps of flesh, looking almost as if they're made of primordial clay, but they have rudimentary eyes and a nose and a mouth and their faces are just sort of melted horror as they just heave themselves onto the bank and begin to move towards the tower. Um, those of you who are coming behind Artem, you, uh, you were able to see on one side, the other, and they appear to be coming at you from all sides. And Artem, you see them coming at you from the front of this tower. And, my friends, we will roll initiative. We've already told you no. <laughs> <laughs> run, run away? Can I just run away instead of rolling? 
<laughs> You're welcome you to take try. the dodge action again and again. <laughs> and again. Just over and over and over again. Can't hit dodge me. Dodge and Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I think I did this wrong. Hold on. Let me do this again. I did click it, but why is it not there? Try again. We uh, this is another fine mess you've gotten us into. If I look out, they'll kill me quick and easy. You did, you did roll <laughs> an eight, 18 first segment. Alrighty, I've got Chexter, Artem. Ooh, I need to roll for our friends. Oh. Sekhmet rolled an 18. To... Yeah, I forgot to select my character the first time, so I rolled another one. Gotcha, no problem. You can't click on and... it. Uh, is, is Zach taking part in this battle? I'm quite certain that he would just be trying to run away and hide and do nothing. Yeah, alright. So he'd be taking the dodge action quite Very early. well. And let me... but at, at a at an intelligence of below three, just simply animal instinct. I'm yes. sure he would just be dodging, Indeed. doing what he needs to do to stay alive. All right, and that's going to bring us to. Sorry, I need to make sure I have the missing characters character sheets up because I want to make sure that you guys have their help. That's a lot of. We're gonna on need this it. Map. <laughs> By That's the way, awesome. for those of you tuning in, uh, we're not a partial party. We do have a couple other people that are just not able to be with us tonight. That would be uh, Cordelia and Zelmira, and they're they're here with us in spirit and they, cursed for it. They would have wanted us to play without them. A shamshul just did. did, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> and they still do, and they'll be back next week. I hope. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. All right. I believe that is everybody. At the top of the order, we have Cordelia. Cordelia looks around and she casts. Spiritual weapon. And it appears. Good cat. Right next to her. Hmm? Good cast. Yes, it was. Wow. Um, and she looks down and sees these things approaching, and she looks down at one, and she casts uh, do, 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 Toll the Dead on the one that is closest to her here. It makes a wisdom saving throw, which it fails with a one. And so it takes. Is that the one she hit with a spiritual weapon? Hmm. Is that the one she hit with? She a could also weapon? hit with it. She, she's. She's. She, we'll see. She crit. Spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon. She critted. <laughs> she critted with the spiritual weapon. I see it. I see it. Give all me a right. minute. A wave <laughs> of spiritual force radiates out, and they all die. Yeah. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Not uh, told that it's just um, sacred flame. That's what I meant to say. It failed with a one. And she did 10 points of damage onto the one here. Um, as it reaches, looks like it's reaching the, the bottom, it is going to try and climb up. Um, but it is moving extremely slowly. Her word of radiance hits it, and then the uh, spiritual weapon comes down and completes the job, killing it. And that's going to bring us to Zelmira. Zelmira holds an attack. Um, actually, Zelmira doesn't hold attack. She continues down following Artem. Artem, I'm going to move you to where you are. You are here. Um, Zilmira comes there. Um, you can see from that spot, you can see this Lemur, and you can see also coming around the corner appears to be another. It looks like it's going to be coming in after you from the bottom. Um, and she holds an action to attack the first thing that comes within range. That's going to bring us to Jexter. Gosh. Um, now, I uh, just want to get quick clarity. I can see all of these creatures. They're topping or what I have so to they're, they're all at the down. base of the tower. So um, you've, I, I, as initiative has started, I have assumed that you all kind of ran to each corner of the tower to see what the groans and everything were coming up. So you know that these are there, but you will need to actually be right next to the edge of the tower to have line of sight on whatever it is you wish to hit. And how tall, roughly? is the tower roughly 30 features. feet 
roughly 30 feet. Very good. Thank you. Um, I am going to step directly here, sh shrugging off Zack, getting him to go to the middle and hide. So and clingy. then I will uh, activate my dancing rapier. Alrighty. And bring it out. Bringing its magic word of sachet. I shall send it down 30 feet, which is its range, and it will attack the creature, rolling an 18 to hit. That is a hit. For seven points of piercing magical damage. Uh, this is on this one here? Yes, correct. And how much damage did you do? Seven. Seven. All right, got it. And so that is summoning is my bonus action, and mm -hmm. also that attack is my bonus action. So I can't do anything. Well, you can have two really interesting. Oh, it attack! You summon it, and it can attack immediately. That's what. Yes. You don't actually summon uh, it; you just sort of send it's it a out. Bonus action command word, and right. it goes. Got it. Uh, Indeed. And it uses my stuff, but it does not use it. It's independent. Got it. So I can still have an action, but there's. Not a lot that I could do, so I'm actually going to take the dodge action. Just in case dodge anything action. attacks me. Very I good. Don't see. Jexter is dojaying. Doge. All right. All That's going to bring us to Artem. So I can see one where you I am? You can see this one right now. All right. Go ahead and move him there. Uh, I will go ahead and take a crossbow shot at it. All right. Uh, Got a little bit of cover, but should be fine yeah with a 14 you've no problem you've hit it all right that's a whole five points of damage got it because all of my spells and, and, are... and, he goes, and the flesh almost seems to pour over it almost as if it just sort of consumes the 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 bolt and uh i will you can move on to the next one i always have to find homunky jade's uh force attack but that'll be the bonus action and that'll okay. be the end of my turn it is now their turn as this one here moves in, moving extremely slowly. But he is able to get to there. The one that Jexter just attacked moves one, two, and is able to get to here. Uh, no longer in line of sight of you, Jexter. And the rest come and use all of their movement to slowly begin climbing up the tower. Just as they reach it, their hands just sort of stick to it and they begin to almost flow up the tower, moving their arms and legs in sort of a mockery of what it once was to climb as they just sort of ooze their way up the tower. So they all move a total of 15 feet. That's going to bring us to... Oh, uh, the, the one that is there to attack you, Artem. Uh, I'm going to do some cracking dice rolling because uh -oh. it's fun. Yes. That is going to be a miss with a total of 12. Uh, yes, that is indeed a miss. That's what I thought. And that's going to bring us to Belitus. Sweet Belitus! Sweet, 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 sweet Belitus! I'm only saying that because I know if Liz was here, she would have said it absolutely Every right. time. Um, I move but to the can't edge, speak, so be bzz, bzz, bzz. And I will Thorn Whip one, if I can. Mm -hmm. Very well. Plus six to attack. Uh, let me do it in thingy. So you've got two here. Which one are you attacking? Uh, either of them. It's fine. All right, we'll say you're attacking the most southern one then. Uh, a 12. 12 is a hit. Very good. I will... Seven. Four... Uh, I think it's... I think it's force damage. Let me just double check. Uh, it is piercing damage. Oh, it's piercing damage. Thorn Whip is piercing damage. And I will pull him up 10 feet towards me. Mm -hmm. And then I will use my reaction... So hit him with my spores. Okay. Um, does that pull him off the? Does it pull him off the side? Um, that's sporchy, any? It pulls him up, and I'm gonna have him make a check to see whether or not he falls or if he can Fuck stick me. back to the wall. 
Fuck. A DC 14. But roll your damage for your spores first. Uh, DC 14 con save, I believe, for that first. Con save, all right. Yes. They failed with a five. Oh, well, it's necrotic, so I don't know if they take necrotic. Wow. They do. One damage. One damage. Got it. That is the end of Bolitas' turn, I believe, which will does bring he, us to Sehmet. Does he save up the top? Does, oh, does good call. On? Forgot about it. Said it and immediately forgot. And That's for right. his dex check, he rolls a negative one and he falls. He was up 15 feet. Uh, I pulled him up a further. Give him a D6. Yeah, I pulled him up Got what, it. 10 feet, 25 feet total. You get 10 for free, but because it was more than 10, oh, I say he did roll. See, and I'm going to do the damage here. He doesn't lands on the ground. I'm going to move him here to, to represent that, but he's actually at the base, still alive. Yeah. Segment. And a bonus Where action, I cast Shillelagh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Spores is not a, oh, it's your reaction. Got it. Gotcha. Now, segment. Ow. Um, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. God, all of these spiritual weapons flying around. All right. So this one is going to be your segment for um, Ra. We're going to make that golden. Cordelia's is going to be the skull. Mine and the be one purple. that doesn't have anything. The one that doesn't have anything on it is um, <laughs> is uh, the rapier. Rapier. Well, is, is there a token that you would like? No, it's good. It's good. Okay, all right. What you doing, Sekhmet? Okay, so, oh, can I move my... How do I move my weapon? Um, I make it so you can move it. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. That will be... Controlled by segments. Got it. You should be able to move it now. Okay. I put it here. Okay. And attack that guy. Go for it. And that is That's a, a twenty-six hit. to hit. Uh, eight force damage. Eight force damage. And then I'm going to uh, move to this one and do Shocking Grasp. He's 15 feet below you. Oh. Yeah, he, they're very slow they're and they use all yet. their movement. They're, they're climbing up the, uh, the side of the tower. Let's do something a bit more ranged. Um... Chill touch? Chill touch. The strangely named spell that does I neither know. cold damage nor requires touching. I have to look it up every time because I'm like, what's this do? It's a very poorly named spell, but yes. I hate it. Chill touch. Chill touch. The uh, con save? No. Was... No, it's just attack. It's attack. It's just an attack. Ah. Snaking down from your hand is. Six again to hit. That's a very palpable hit. And then these Ooh, it 11 is necrotic destroyed. damage. Ha! Eh. Oh, I was hitting the other one. Uh, doesn't matter. I guess. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if They're you don't care, exactly I don't care. We'll take that, that one out. <laughs> all right. And that's going to bring us back to the top of the order with Cordelia, who turns her attention to the one that you said you were going to attack, sends her spiritual weapon down to attack it. And hits, doing that much damage, and then she sacred flames it. It tries to <laughs> not be sacred flamed. Oh, this one! Wow, he he saved with a roll of I must have rolled. Yeah, I rolled a nineteen, so he actually does succeed in saving and does not take damage from the sacred flame. However. The spiritual weapon did get him. And that's going to bring us to Zelmira, who um, has lost her held action. Um, she steps past you, Artem, to right here and attacks the one that you've been attacking. And... Doo -doo -doo. 
Zelmira is going to use her fists to attack. She punches it once. Ooh, with a crit. That is going to be enough to finish him. Um, it's the power of the proboscis. Leaps forward and attacks this other one, and she grabs it by its shoulders and just sticks the proboscis right into its forehead. Don't, I don't think she's going to uh, like that she did that. And it's going to take um, a few points of piercing damage. But as she does this, you can see that the proboscis actually pumps something into it. But it appears to have no effect. Jexter, it is your turn. Oh my goodness. That's just unsettling. And I'm so glad that I can't see it up here on top of the tower. <laughs> This creature to the north, I'm sorry, the southwest of me, uh, is it at the top of the... None of the, none of the Lemures have reached the top. Is They're all, the, 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 there's one here that's at the bottom having fallen, the rest are 15 feet up. Okay. And they I have will. 15 more feet to go. I will, s I will step in front of my new friend, Zach, and I will direct my sword my dancing rapier to advance and attack. All right. Uh, if you give me a moment, and it is now under your control. Very good. So it My flies up attacks. and strikes at this creature. And it is rolling a 18 to hit with that nine hit. piercing damage. Nine piercing damage. Got it. Uh, I will also... Finish my turn. Alrighty. I didn't, um, I didn't chew fast enough. Sorry. <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. While he's chewing, while he's still chewing, I thought it was. I forgot that it was a. It, it is a bonus action. Mm -hmm. To do that. Um, so I'm actually going to do uh, an action of vicious mockery at the same creature. All right. Foot. Uh, Mocking it in a bad way. I need a wisdom save. A wisdom that. save. Coming at you. I have rolled a nine. That is a fail for four points of psychic damage. Four points of psychic damage. Uh, it sort of reels, batting away your rapier, but it did take the damage and it appears to be barely holding on. Okay. Sorry about that. No. It looks up at you balefully. Its eyes, you can look at it. You see actual tears streaming from its eyes as it looks up at you. You're so mean. Artem. Artem is horrified at uh, what his sister just did. And so it takes him a minute to to steady himself and recognize that, uh, you know, there's still there's still an enemy there. So he will take a step to the right. And um, ZC has very kindly let me know that I can just cast my own spell attack for Hunky Jade. Um, so that's what I will do. And it's 1d4 plus three. So I can roll without hunting for it. 13? 13. 13 is it. And that is seven points of damage. It is destroyed. Um, and then uh, I, I can't see any others where I am, can I? Um, from where you are at the moment, you cannot. Although you do hear sounds of many, many more outside. If I were to run and not run in the water, of course. But no, the, I... you, okay, so just to be clear, this is the second <laughs> floor that you are running outside to here. Right, right. Um, so if I were to go to that point, I still wouldn't be able to see any. Is that right? Um, yes, from that spot, everyone that you would be able to see is dead. Uh, okay, so let me count my movement. That's 5, 10, 15, 20. I have 10 more points of movement. Um, so could you put me where I'm supposed to be? On All right, the... so you have 10 more points of movement from where you are currently? Yes. And you're going to the left or to the right? Uh, I can go to the left. All right, so we'll have you go there and there. Perfect. So there and you are. Do I have line of sight to this guy? Yes, you do. All right, then I will take he a shot. He is 15 feet up. With a crossbow. With the crossbow. 
Very dramatic roll of a 10. Very dramatic roll of a 10 is a hit. Oh, all right. I'll take it. And seven points of piercing. That is going to be enough to finish him off as he's looking up at Jexter, just... (laughs) Falls down in a lump at the bottom of the tower. As you are standing there, happy about your shot, you hear... (laughs) From directly behind you as two more emerge from the waters on their turn. Two more emerge there. Two more emerge here. Also, two here. And also, two here. Um, let me see here. See this. Um, Cordelia uh, looks over to you, Belitis, and you look at her, and both of you realize at the same time you can hear over the sounds of the distant battle and the sounds of the <laughs> slurping water beneath you, you hear a buzzing sound coming from directly above you. You both look up and you see descending very quickly two enormous wasps that beat their wings with furious power and their eyes are glowing red with fire. That's going to bring us to the Lemure's turn. This one comes to here. This one comes to here. Both of them attack you, Artem. We've got a 16 to hit. Miss. And a 10. Miss. This one moves 5, 10, 15. Moves to there to attack um, Zelmira. This one moves there and then dashes to move there. Only one of them can get an attack. He attacks, hitting. Ooh, AC 18. That is going to be a hit on Zelmira, who takes some damage as a fist lashes out and smacks her in the face. And let's see, the rest that are here that are not dead continue moving up. This one moves again to the wall, 5, 10, and is able to get just a little ways up. This one uses all of its movement and its action to get to the very top. It's right in front of you, Belitis, but it cannot attack. Same for this one. It is up to the top of the wall, but it cannot move in. This one moves to the wall and begins to move up 15 feet. This one moves to the wall. This one moves... I'm going to move that to there, so nobody gets confused. This one moves to the wall and begins to crawl up. Cannot get very high at all. This one gets to the top, but cannot attack. And this one moves to here. And this one moves to here. I'm going to move that back there so nobody gets confused. And there it is. And that's going to bring us to Belitis. Okay. Um, so this one that's climbing up, if I moved, he wouldn't be able to... Would he be able to get an attack of opportunity on me? Which one? This one here, if he's climbing. This one would. Okay. But this one would not. I... Again, powers up his shell and blue fissures start to glow around obviously to match the shell shape and he activates his spores Mm -hmm. which is an action um i move to there so he's off so he can't be pushed off and i use my reaction on the wasp okay um for a spores damage uh, con save uh, they, they are they are not they are uh they're still 60 feet up oh okay i'll do it on the one that's climbing right next to me then okay so the one that is right there got it con save 14. i have a seven <laughs> you found 
Uh, he takes 2d6 necrotic damage for 5. 2d6 necrotic damage for 5. Got it. And I ready myself for combat. And I look at Cordelia. Okay. Alrighty. Hell Wasp comes down. This one actually moves to here to attack Sekhmet. It flies, oh, passing this... over your head, Belitus. Oh, and this one over here attacks Cordelia. Do I get an attack of opportunity? So could... No, it was it ah. flew down from 60 feet up. Ah. Uh, so this one, it first attacks her with its sting as it comes down and as it pulls up, its wings um, beating ferociously, its abdomen comes forward and an enormous stinger comes forward and tries to pierce Cordelia's armor. Ooh, getting AC 14. Die. I don't think that's going to do it. Let me double check. Yeah. She's got lots of armor. Um, so that does not succeed. However, she then, then attacks her with its talons. That will hit. Let me just see if there's anything she can do about that. There is not. She takes nine points of piercing. Then the one comes over to you, Sekhmet, and it attacks. The sting comes out, hitting AC 23. On me, yeah? Absolutely right. hits. Oh, Eight points of piercing. Oh, that's it. That's me. That's you <laughs> down? down? All right. Can I use my... Periapt of wound closure. Wound closure, indeed. So let's see, eight points of piercing plus eight. So that you took fire damage as well, but that was all part of one attack. So it brings you down to zero. Okay. Um, I will need you to go ahead and make a uh, Constitution saving throw. Meanwhile, the um... <laughs> which you saved twenty five. Oh, so thank goodness. You are not paralyzed. Um, Thank which goodness. would not really have affected anything about to happen, uh, but your periaptive wound closure on your turn will automatically uh, stabilize you. Okay, now, question about, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I can't make this, sorry, I'm trying to make a menu go away so I can like see everything that's not going through. Just, um, I had it, there's like a clicky box. <laughs> do a clicky I, box. I you don't have do to give I... me more than that. Right. So beside periaptive wound closure, there's like a box to click. I'm assuming because I've used it, or like, what's that mean? Uh, no, the periaptive wound closure is not a use. It just happens. I can just if you have say it, I'm doing you it. Automatically I can do stabilize it. when you get to zero. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't like. Yeah, you're good. One time use. You're okay. Nope. You're you are good. However, it does have another attack, and it uses this attack on your <laughs> unconscious form. <laughs> I'm so dead. To make a grapple attack. <laughs> She had a right to be nervous about her mortality here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is uh, going to be, yeah. okay. So no it does way. succeed. You are you are helpless, and it grabs you, and you are now in its sword-like arms. Bye, guys. Um, <laughs> so it was sixty feet up, so it has moved, and that is its turn. The other one has attacked, so and now it's turn. around with my body. <laughs> So on your turn, Sekhmet, the periapto wound closure automatically seals your wounds. You do not need to make any um, death saves. What is a major regret that Sekhmet will have if she dies on this tower? And not getting Jexter home. Not getting Jexter home. All right, that brings us to Cordelia, who looks over and sees this <laughs> happening job. and screams. She brings up the uh, spiritual weapon to attack the uh, Hell Wasp. Meanwhile, DM, we've had donations mm. of a thousand bits and a five hundred bits from our very own Liz. That's oh, one healing potion goodness. and one inspiration. D twenty inspiration. Fighting against the tides of fate. <laughs> oh man. Uh, all right, so that's going to be... All right. So at the top, well, we have Shane, who won with the 20. But then we have Cordelia and Artem. So uh, Cordelia, so the Give first one, what, what was the first thing she she, um, she donated? Uh, one was a healing potion. 
Okay. And one so Cordelia, you have a healing potion in your pack. She's not here. I think you'll have to keep that in mind for her, DM. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. I, Cordelia, will put a healing potion in my pack. It is done. <laughs> and a D20 inspiration. So the D20 inspiration goes to Artem. I've won twice already, so I am happy to share it with someone else. You are welcome to give it and somebody's done. turn when they do it. Okay. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank and thank you. you to everyone else that's donating bits right now. We are very close to a hype train. Ooh. Wait, Release the Kraken. All right. All right, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Artem okay. Uh, right. Um, spiritual weapon comes streaking up to strike at the wasp that has um, uh, Sehmet. Spiritual weapon comes up and attacks. Ooh, but I'm afraid a 13 is not going to be enough. And Don't then Cordelia. Hit Cordelia runs forward, taking an attack of opportunity, and she's going to cast um, Inflict Wounds at... Oh, she doesn't have any fourth levels left. She's got a fourth level? Uh, sorry, she doesn't she's have any fourth level. She's powerful. She doesn't have any third Damn. level. Damn. I meant to say. She does have a third level left. She's going to hold on to that. She is going to use Inflict Wounds at first level. Which will hit with a 24 to a 25 points of necrotic damage. Holy smokes. Ha! Ah, pow. That's a lot. That's Panda. She's not even here and she's busting it out. Just make sure I clicked on the right thing because, oh my goodness. Yep, that was just really good rolls. Yeah, 3D. Yeah, that's that's five Damn. points short of max. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. So the uh, the hell wasp screeches <laughs> as it takes this necrotic damage, and you see bits and pieces of it falling off from this tremendous attack. Uh, Zelmira. Zelmira uh, attacks the creature in front of her with her fists. Pack hitting once with a 21, that's going to be a hit. Doing five points of bludgeoning damage. Then she is going to attack again. Bang! Hitting. She slays it with maximum damage. Um, then she turns to the other one and attacks it with flurry of blows using a key point. Oh, which she is out of. Never mind. She uses a bonus action to just hit him. Does she, she get any back? Oh, she, oh, she gets a back long short, rest. You took a short rest, so they're back. A short rest. Yes. Click on Thank that you. on the, the character sheet. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So now, yes, she uses a key point to do flurry of blows. And so that's two more hits. Ooh. No. Yes. No, yes. Here it comes. No, 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 yes. Oh, the crit. That's going to finish him. Oh. Um, she's got one more attack left of a flurry of blows, but there's no more targets. So she's going to use her action to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Run to here and use her last flurry of blows on this creature. And... Two. Holy smokes, Zamira is on fire with a 19. That's going to be another hit. And she comes to the aid of her brother with a roundhouse kick that just clobbers this fellow, although he's still standing. She's pulling inspiration from cold pepper hot salt right there in the Twitch <laughs> chat. Jexter, it is your turn, sir. I am so sorry about that. Uh, so I'm going to first sorry, it's move your turn. over. Yeah, I am. <laughs> gonna first uh, drag Zach with me and uh, come over here and attack the big wasp nader with my regular rapier 
Okay. First. That is rolling a 14 to hit. 14 is not going to hit, unfortunately. And then I'm going to bring over my dancing rapier. And rather than putting it over my head, um, I'll put it right there. Can you remind me of the range that you can move it on your turn? 30. 30. So it was 15 feet down. Attacking the one that he attacked before. Are we doing that now? Well, there's a wall there. Okay. The 15 feet that he can't then it, then it, it, if, it, if it was <laughs> just in space, then yes, there is no square of the hypotenuse. It, but it comes the wall up and must comes be halfway, observed. and I'll have it attack the other wasp. The other wasp, got it. it. And it's rolling a 14 to hit again. So. That unfortunately does not hit. And that's all for me. All righty, it's going to bring us to Artem. Oh, God, this is terrible. Um, all right, uh, I would be shooting at disadvantage, um, but it definitely makes more sense for me to crossbow than it does for me to quarter staff. So I am going to uh, shoot the one that Zelmira hit already. All righty. And a disadvantage, that is a big 11. Mm, that's going to hit. All right. For seven. On um, the one that Zelmira hit? Yes, that's correct. That will kill it. All right. And then uh, Hamonkey Jade will attack the other one on me with a force strike for uh, 12 to hit. That's a hit. And six points of damage. Got it. And I'm going to stay with my sister. Okay. The Muir's turn. Okay, so the one that is here moves up to the top. He is there. This one was already at the top. He steps in 5, 10, and moves to Zack. Uh, this one moves up to the top. He is now at the top. This one moves almost to the top, not quite there. This one moves almost to the top, not quite there. This one is at the top. It attacks um, Bolitas. This one almost reaches the top. This one gets to the t- uh, almost the top, almost the top, almost to the top. Okay. So, attacking at Artem, we have a 19 to hit. That is the meat to beat. Four points of bludgeoning. Wow. Is that right? Yep. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, Belitis, what is your current AC now that you're all turtled up? Oh, it's still the same. It's 20. All right. It doesn't matter. He rolled a 15. That's not going to hit. And those are the only ones that are in range. Um, so the rest... Oh, oh though there's one. <laughs> there's one that does attack Zack. Hitting. Zack has been killed. As this thing... Even, even though he was dodging? Disadvantage? He is a commoner. Disad- <laughs> okay, he rolled double 16s. Okay. My yeah. Lemire rolled double sixteens. Uh, Clutching. Um, so it comes up and just, and Zach is looking survive. at it, scratching at it with animal instinct. And you <laughs> as the Lemire reaches it and just <laughs> smashes his face in. And he falls limp. No. Dead. That's going to bring us to Belitus. Belitus thunders powers thunder down his shillelied quarterstaff and attacks the wasp da, 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 for a 21 a hit that is a hit uh, that is five roll damn you <laughs> roll why is it not rolling you should have used your dice should have used oh, that Kraken dice. It, it won't, it won't roll, but hang on. <clears throat> I rolled a one. Uh, right, so... Oh, no, no, I did, it did... No, I didn't roll in there. Okay, so there's eight bludgeoning. You got it. Five necrotic and one thunder. Mm, your shillelagh is considered a magic weapon, it right? It is indeed. Got it. And if it's still alive, it needs to make... A con save, DC 14. Con save, so eight, minus five, and then, then you rolled a one for the last one? 
Yes, thunder damage, yeah. All right, so, and the uh, con save, you say? Just, uh... I have a 17. Oh, damn you. Sorry. It's okay. So sorry. Oh, look, my, my thing finally rolled about 500. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take the one, I'm afraid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anything else will lead us? Um, <clears throat> no, he's ready for it to fly off. All right, it does. It takes off with okay. Sekhmet in its talons, incurring an attack 11. of opportunity from Belitus, Jexter, and Cordelia. It also takes 11 thunder damage as soon as it moves. That's our roll to Got it. 11 thunder damage. Kill gotcha. It. Kill it. Save me, save me. Uh, 24 to hit. 24 is a hit. Roll your damage. Another nine. Another nine. Ooh. All right. So that's Belitus. Uh, Jexter, are you taking attack of opportunity? 17 to hit. 17 is not a hit. What? Ugh. It is not a hit, I'm Can afraid. Can add my Cord- D6? Do it. I already called it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it has to. You have to that's get why that I D6. said it that way. But <laughs> Yeah, I know. You have to get that D6 in before I say it didn't hit. Cordelia? Sorry. Cordelia. I was just checking. Cordelia has inspiration from her last game. Apparently she won uh, a D20 inspiration. So she's going to use it on this um, on this uh, attack. And she is going to use her Warhammer. Do it. So she's got a 21. (sighs) It is not enough to kill it. And it flies up into the air 120 feet. If you used, she could crit fish. She only rolled once. Good point. Good point. (laughs) We're going to keep the 21. It flies into the air 120 feet up with Sekhmet in its grasp. Sekhmet. I'm a sad cat. You are unconscious, but stable. Yeah. What do you dream of as you are carried into the skies of Avernus? Uh, can, can I get back to you on my dream? Yes. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. thanks. <laughs> Cordelia looks up and screams in frustration, realizing that anything she would do would cause you to fall. And probably, That's okay, though. Do it, Cordelia. Probably land in the sticks. Oh, that's not okay. How'd it do that? It flew. But it didn't go sideways. It's still right above us. It went a bit sideways. It doesn't... <laughs> like a helicopter it moves to the side you didn't say that <laughs> is what happened the dear no to him no um tears streaming down her face what could she do no one has um feather fall right someone does Sekhmet has arguing. Sekhmet has levitate, but that doesn't matter. No, <laughs> I've got featherfall. You do? Yes, that's why I was arguing that you didn't say she went sideways. It did go sideways. <laughs> I wasn't arguing to be a. Because <laughs> I have no, feather no, fall. I, I understand. We, no, we I understand. The it, mic. it suits the story for her to have gone sideways. She looks, Cordelia looks at you, Jexter, desperately. What can I do? What can you do? I can shoot it down, but she'll fall into the water. It's that or she's gone forever. She looks up well, and she on, casts. Hold on, this is the new round, right? Yes, this is a new round. I want to make sure. 
When do I get my reaction back? Uh, after your turn. Then there's nothing to be done. Well, it depends on how fast she falls. She would instantly hit the water. No way! There's nothing to be done then. <clears throat> but Liz just donated 500 bits. Yes, off. Yep. Who did it? Who did it? Liz is just the only 500 bits. Another, oh, another Liz. 500 bits. <laughs> Liz, stop! <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Stop, Liz. DM is like Liz. You can't save them. Liz, you just <laughs> gave me inspiration. Oh, oh no! Oh god! Yeah, but you're playing Cordelia. It's good. No, uh, it clearly says me DM has the 20. All right. You already had it. You win it every time. It actually goes to Sh Shane. Great. Goes to <laughs> um. Awful. I can't do anything myself. You don't have your reaction. I I don't have because you reaction. used it already for the. Yep. You used it I'm, for the. I'm, the, I'm the, being uh, being honest about it. Used yeah, the reaction used it for, for the attack the, uh, opportunity the, uh, and it's attack. not come back yet. At least it's just That's, donated another 500 bits. So reactions Stop. come what back after the turn, not at the beginning of the round. Oh dear. Man. The latest. The latest you have yes, I've got inspiration. Thanks, Liz. Cordelia screams in rage and turns towards the Hell Wasp that is over here that has yet to take its turn. Um, it flies. It flies towards Cordelia. Um, let's see. What's Cordelia going to do? What would Cordelia do? She doesn't have anything that she could do that's in range other than hurt the thing. Yeah, the only thing she has that she could cast is guiding bolt that's at 120 foot range but that would if it hits it would probably kill the wasp and segment would fall into the river sticks so instead of that she is going to turn to the hell wasp here and she's going to cast inflict wounds at third level let's touch oh one the, the one closest yeah just screaming in rage tears streaming down her face she just reaches out and grabs onto this thing just <sighs> and oh she <laughs> off, sorry, I meant just, to say just, she uses just, her inspiration just, sorry just, oh, she just already for used the record it. Shit. just for the record uh, Cordelia if this goes wrong in the spirit of Cordelia I'm sure she'll just fish Sekhmet out of the water and I don't know animate dead or something uh, so that's going to be um, I told you miss. I'm immortal <laughs> a miss unfortunately and the spell is expended just to either side of the wasp as it dodges out of her way that's going to bring us to Zelmira who hears, hears Cordelia scream there is nothing she can do either everything is out of range Could the spiritual weapon get that far? Uh, it can't feet. be moved more than 30 feet. 20 feet. Oh, let's move 20 feet and yeah. Attack. Sorry, yeah, move, okay. move 20 yeah. feet. Try in here. She doesn't have anything she could do either. She looks up, she sees Sekhmet being thrown, carried away, and she just rages and turns this thing and once again grabs it and just sticks this thing that's sticking out of her mouth. Just sticks it right into it and does... Uh, well, she rolls a natural one on that one. She tries again. That's better. Nine points of bludgeoning. That's going to kill her. Um, oddly, Sekhmet, it does not go down. Uh, it's not concentration based. It just sort of hangs there waiting for you. But if you go out of range of it, it does disappear. And you have gone out of range of it, I believe. What is the range? Somebody look that up for me as we move on to Jexter. Oh, no, they can look it up while I'm waiting. It's okay. 
Uh, uh, I actually have a quick question. If you cast a spell during your turn, can you cast a spell for your reaction as well, or is that forbidden also? No. Like a leveled spell, like level one spell action, level one spell reaction. So yes. what was your question? The, the question about casting of leveled spells. If you cast a leveled spell for your action, mm -hmm. and then something happens and you get a reaction, mm -hmm. in that situation, you can also cast a leveled spell, correct? Yes, reaction is, you get one reaction per round and you can use it for however you want. Okay. Regardless of what the level is. If you can hit it, if I, I can hit it, and you hold your reaction, if, if I hit it, I can use my reaction. Yeah, exactly, yeah. If it dies. True. It It is wounded, right? It is. Unfortunately, I'm a bard. And I don't have a lot of things like Firebolt or Chill Touch at my disposal. Uh... Okay, I'm gonna try something. Okay, go for it. I, no, wait, no, I can't do that. Can't do that. Gonna keep trying something different. No problem. Just. And if there is, I, I know that spiritual weapon does not drop if you are unconscious. I just wanna check to see if it drops if you move out of a certain range. Otherwise, I think it just stays there until the duration ends. But you did say this thing was 60 feet in the air, right? It is 120 feet in the air. 120 feet in the air. Even better. Wow. Uh, that's even more whole lot of nothing that I can do. Do it. Do what? <laughs> I know. This is awful. Stop saying that. Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's... I, I could chill touch it. Uh, for now, there's just not a whole of a lot that I can do to that. So my rapier is right next to the other one. It is. So it's going to go ahead and attack that one. Okay. Uh, rolling a 24. Uh, 24 is a hit, of course. That's five points from the dancing rapier All right. to the big wasp right there. Okay. He's not dead. The big wasp? No, that's the first damage he's taken. <sighs> um, then I'm going to step towards him and looking down at the fallen Zack uh, take a stab at the Lemure that, at Very the, well. the whatever. It's not Lemure. What are these things? There are Lemures. Or there are Kill them. You, you mean you wouldn't know that? I'm, and I'm going to yes. yell out, uh, stabbing with the regular raper. You killed Shane. Rolling a 10. 10 is, is, a, is a hit. Three points of damage. Three points of damage. That's going to bring us to Artem. There's not much else I can do aside from continue to try to pick these guys off. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to uh, do my crossbow at the one on the side. Uh, and that is a 10. 10 is a hit. Four. Oh, God. I, this is terrible. Three points of damage. And Three. then I will... Uh, I will Monk you force strike the other one. A the monk you one. force strike. Yes. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. That is a hit. And that's another six. Another six. Gotcha. It's the end of my turn. All right. That's going to bring us to the Lemures. Uh, this Lemure moves to here to attack Cordelia. This one comes to you. Um, Jexter, this one comes up to here. He doesn't have the movement to get to the top. Um, and attack, so he does a, um, a dash action. Same with this one, does not have the movement to get to the top, 
and attack dash action. This one moves to here to attack Cordelia. This one moves to here to attack Cordelia. This one moves to here to attack Belitus. This one <laughs> continues to climb up. Um, and this one gets to the top but cannot attack. That's going to bring us... Let's see here. So that's one, two, three, and four. So two attack Jexter. This one has a plus one because of the Hell Wasp. Hitting AC 9. The other one hits uh, AC 12. The one attacking Cordelia hits AC 14, which is not enough. And the one... Oh, the last one does hit with a 21, and Cordelia takes four points of bludgeoning. And that is the Lemures done. And that's going to bring us to Boletus. What do you got, Boletus? Um... He will look to Jex, though, obviously, with the idea that you had. <clears throat> he will move... So, 120 foot away from the wasp, yeah? Mm-hmm. I can't let her die like that. So, I will cast Chill Touch. Alrighty. And I will use my inspiration that I just got. Go for it. Wow. What have you rolled, Belitus? I rolled a 12 and a 13. Unfortunately, neither one of those are able to find their target. Any bonus action on your turn, Belitus? Um. Um. <clears throat> I will move around. Is he within 10 foot, that big boy? Mm, five, now, which which ten, one of these has been damaged? Any of these been damaged? I will whip out the spores of whoever's been damaged near me. Um, or near the others. The two that are closest to you have been damaged. I will whip out the spores towards them then. Alrighty, what am I rolling? DC 14 con save. DC 14 con, so that's on 8. Uh, he has failed. Eight damage. And that's going to kill him. That's exactly what he had left. As spores rip him apart and he falls down, sort of... <laughs> These bodies do not explode or disappear anyway. They just sort of take on a slightly lumpy, misshapen look. Like if you didn't know that they had once been moving and living creatures, you would think that they were um, just mounds of clay. But the... Uh, I will move into that space. Very well. The Hell Wasp's turn. The Hell Wasp carrying Cordelia flies away another 120 feet and oh, Sekhmet, you mean. is barely Sekhmet. visible. Hmm? Sekhmet, not Cordelia? Sorry, Sekhmet. Cordelia continues to scream as this Hell Wasp attacks uh, Jexter, who just attacked him. Stinging him with hitting AC 21. 10 points of piercing plus 10 points of fire damage. And I will need a constitution saving throw from you. From who? From uh, Jexter. You said 10 and 10? 10 and 10. Is that with her, the, that's with her before the saving throw or what? That's, that's damage. That's the piercing from the, so the, the uh, the stinger comes and hits you and does piercing damage as it comes in, but as it comes in, it also burns and sears. Um, okay. and you so 20 total damage. and what type of saving throw? Constitution. 20, natural. You are fine. You are able to so throw I'm off the effects far from of the fine. poison. Sahmet, you're being carried away to... Osiris only knows what. What are you dreaming of? I see Jexter's home just being attacked and helpless and no hope 
in helping anyone there or the home or the land. I see Jexter upset, even though he had hardships with his family. He's distraught and just devastated that we weren't able to make it back there to save anything. I'm hot. I'm so very, very hot. And I just can't figure out where it's coming from. But I'm just this painfully hot all over. And then, then I hear Cordelia screams and I see her face just drenched in tears as it's zooming away from me as she's screaming. And all I feel is heat and nothing. Farewell, Sekhmet. <laughs> Cordelia attacks her spiritual weapon comes hitting AC 23 which does hit doing 10 damage as it smashes into the hell wasp she then attacks it with her warhammer. Hitting AC 18, which is a hit. Does she have a shield equipped? She does. So one-handed, nine points of bludgeoning damage. And that is just her turn. That will bring us to Zelmira, who hears Cordelia screams and looks with horror at Artem and begins to run for the stairs inside. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. She dashes up, um, which gets her to the top because of Monk's agility. And she is just reaching to there as she is finished with her turn. Jexter. Muted, buddy. Sorry. Uh, so, um, going to cast a spell on the wasp that is there, because he's not really hurt much, right? Um, he's taken some damage. Going to go ahead and. Cast a spell on him, though. This uh, I'll need a DC 15 intelligence save. That is what are you casting? Abound. If I may ask. Enemies abound. Enemies on the big wasp. Though. On the one wasp. One that's close to me. Gotcha. I'm reaching into the mind of a creature I can see and forcing him to make an intelligence throw. If it is immune to being frightened, it automatically saves. It has not saved, and it, it the spell loses is the ability effect. to distinguish friend from foe. Okay. And on its turn, it must choose a target at random. How exciting. And um, something. You still have your rapier? Still have the bonus for the rapier, so I'm going to attack the Lemur just below it. Very well. And that is going to hit. Ah, that is a natural one. Unfortunately, not even a natural one can hit a Lemur. And that's it. All right. And that brings us to Artem. Artem's dashing. Uh, right. If I so counted you can't, correctly. You're not nearly as fast as your sister, unfortunately. So you get about halfway up the steps. Okay. Can I put myself 10, to 10, just... 15, 20, 25, 30. You can get to right there. So you're like halfway up. You've got 15 feet before you get to the top. Okay. Muir. The one there attacks... So coming at you, Jexter, I have a natural one. Also at you, Jexter, I have a 15. That is a hit. Two points of bludgeoning. At Cordelia, I have a natural 20 for seven points of bludgeoning. At Belitis, I have a 20 two points of bludgeoning, and an 18. All righty. This Lemure moves to here, attacks Belitis. This Lemure 
Gets to top 5, 10, and attacks Bleedus as well. 13 and 9 both miss. That is them done. Bleedus, it is your turn. Um... I cast Fairy Fire on the big wasp. Okay. Uh, attempts to dodge out of the way with a dexterity saving throw. Rolling a 10, it is Fairy Fired. Fouls. And all attacks against it now have um, advantage. And I will use my reaction to try and hit can save one of the creatures near me and any with any within 10 feet that's taking damage okay uh the one right here it seems to be the most wounded this is the one that is that you initially thorn whipped off and has now finally reached the top again okay uh dc 14 dc 14 uh he's rolling 12. he takes four damage that will be enough to slay it Again, these bodies, they just fall, just immediately just turn into like, almost like lumps of clay or almost appearing to be like laundry, just misshapen lumps of nothingness. And the Hell Wasp then attacks. Um, it is going and to... Con it is under the... Oh, that's right. I need to roll. Enemy is uh, abound. So, so it if... is when the affected... So, uh... Regarding all creatures, it can see as enemies. Okay. And it chooses another creature. Uh, it's so it can see nine of you as an enemy. So that's including yes. the Lemures. <laughs> so uh, should I roll it? Does it tell me what? I think to it's roll? ten, actually, Sean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see nine. Are you seeing Belitus? He's hiding. Or he's dark. Yeah, and then one, Zomira. two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ten. You're right. Ten. Oh, that makes it easy. Oh, there you go. All right. So we'll start uh, with the Lemure at the very bottom, uh, bottom well, right as theory, one, and theory, Zomira the, will be ten. It it, it, it it only has melee attacks, right? It doesn't yes. have any ranged attack. Correct. So in theory, it would only be what it could hit within range, which is only four. Oh, it doesn't have to move to make the attack. I mean, it it doesn't say that, but it's it's. All right, so four. DM's call. It has rolled a one. It attacks this uh, Lemure here. <laughs> Killing it. Uh, it just goes through and comes up and then drops it onto the ground. And it still has one more attack. Um, we're going to roll a d4 and a discount, num discount ones. I will reroll on a one. I rolled a four. That's going to be the other Lemure. Nice. Uh, it attacks that Lemure with its sword talons hitting and surprisingly doesn't kill that one. It is still up, although it did a lot of damage. That's going to bring us to Sechmet. Sechmet continues to fly to her final fate. Cordelia uh, attacks with her spiritual weapon. Spiritual Whipper. Uh, uh, 17 does not hit. Then she attacks with her Warhammer. Did she do it at advantage? Oh, she didn't. Thank you. That will hit. All right. It takes some damage from that. Is that the Wasp? Yes. It gets to repeat a saving throw. DC 15. Thank you. Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. It has rolled a five. Um, and she is going, so this, that, that, uh, it's done. Sure, it's her done. Zelmira, Zelmira steps forward and attacks this Lemure, uh, with her hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, strike, pow. It's a hit, eight points of damage. She attacks again. Also a hit, that will be enough to kill it. It goes down. She steps to here. She uses another key point for um, 
flurry of blows. She's coming in like a house of fire. Yeah. She hits with a 20 for five points. She finishes with bringing down her shoulder right on its head. Uh, that was a short sword. Sorry. <clears throat> Hitting for four points. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, it is still up. And that's going to bring us to Jexter. Okay. Um, uh, taking my chances there, I'm going to... Uh, regular attack the Lemire below me. Okay. That is a rapier strike for a two hit of eight. That hits. <laughs> Three points of damage. That kills it. And then I'm going to uh, cast a quick spell on myself, mm -hmm. lest I die for the next thing that hits me. That is a bonus action healing word for 11 points on myself. Got it. You're healed for 11. And that's it. Your, uh, by the way, your, um, on this turn, your dancing rapier returns and shh goes into its sheath, having made its four attacks. Artem. Artem has been able to uh, quell his fear, and he pops out of the stairs in a blind rage, and he casts Ray of Sickness at the Wasp. Oh. Con save, right? No, no, it's uh, just a to hit. But it, it, he does still make a con save, con save 15. Uh, that's to see whether or not he's poisoned. I have rolled a five. So uh, roll your damage. So that is a total of 13 damage. Ugh, 13. Rolls. What kind of damage? It is poison damage. Poison damage. Nine poison for Savant. Got it. And poison works. Go. Um, and then Hamunky Jade will do her force strike on it. Maybe. Unfortunately, 11 does not hit a monkey jade. That is the end of my turn. The final lemures on the board make their attack. The one that was almost killed by the uh, right. health, uh, the uh, hell wasp attacks. Sorry, Sean. Oh. I didn't attack at advantage with the oh. monkey jade. And that's a 20. That does hit. Sorry. Of course. If it kills it. Yeah. Uh, that's six more? Six more, unfortunately, does not hit. Now, uh, remind me again why you're doubling the die roll. Because it's fairy fired. The damage is not doubled. No, the, but it's 1d4 plus three. And I rolled the three, and it gets three more points. So it hit with the 20. Yeah, so it I definitely hit with advantage. the 20. And then that's he, a total He's of, manually rolling the damage. He's manually rolling damage. Because gotcha. it doesn't work on the sheet. Okay. Sorry. Gotcha. Thank you. All right, so we got a Lemure attacking uh, Cordelia with a fist. That is a miss. We've got one attacking uh, Jexter with a fist. That is a hit for two points of bludgeoning. And we've got one attacking Belitus with a 16, which is a miss. Belitus. Make sure you're not muted there, Belitus. Oh, sorry. I will move around to attack the wasp. Okay. Um, as you do, I believe you incur attacks of opportunity. I do indeed. Two. Uh, they're both going to take it. Toomp. Oh, I have a natural 20 for six points of bludgeoning. Okay. And a 13 for nothing. Six points of damage. And I will attack. Did the loot pile just say something? Yeah. Someone's logged in as a loot pile. <laughs> uh, I will attack with Shillelagh and right. Booming Blade. With 19 to hit. That is a hit. <clears throat> that is 6. So that is 
Uh, nice. 6, 10, 17 damage. Belitis, the final blow on this creature is yours. How do you dispatch just your hits first? It cracks over the head with its staff and it just keeps just pummeling it until it's like nothing but a mess. So you hit it. <laughs> And with each blow, it moves less and less until it is finally destroyed. And then he looks up to the thing that just took a swipe at him and they hit him. And spores come springing out towards it for a con save. All right, con save. They have a 19. Passes. And I I rolled a 19. He looks to Jexter, snaps his fingers. And there's a healing word for seven. All right, so just want to double check none of that stuff that you did was a bonus action? The one I just did was a bonus action. Yeah, nothing, the one you just did, before the stuff was before that. Like, okay, very good. Hell Wasp is dead, and the one seven that is not... Seven healing points to Jexter? Jexter, yeah. You were hurt, okay, weren't you? thank you. The, I didn't um, realize you were hurt. The Hell Wasp that cannot be seen, that is still flying away, is now completely out of sight. And as we come to the end of this turn, and it is Sekhmet's turn once again, Sekhmet, do you have any final words to bestow upon the players that perhaps the characters might hear in their heart? I mean, being hell, there's just an utter disappointment within her I mean, even though she's not conscious to be aware of what's going on, she realizes that she has failed and hopes that it wasn't for nothing that the team will be able to accomplish and get Jexter back home and not be true what she's envisioning of just complete failure of everything going on and just the image of... Cordelia screaming and crying, all she can think of was, I've never said I love you. Okay. These Lemures, there's plenty of turns left between their next turn. Um, There is no chance that they will not be killed. So as the hell wasp falls the rest of you do away with the rest of the lemures and there you stand on the top of this tower in hell bodies of these strange creatures all around you and a distant speck of Sekhmet disappearing into the distance what do you do friends? Sorry. I'm sorry. But get let's get off this thing. Everything can see us here. This is a stage I don't want to be on. Everyone go down the trap. Everyone. Get inside. Bleatus consoles Cordelia and helps her down the stairs. She's crying really and just dry sobbing at this point. What do the rest of you do? Nope, I didn't mean to delete you there, Artem. You can put yourself back. Sure. Would you read the rest? I might need to left. remove Sekhmet from the screen, though. Yeah, Sekhmet, you're gone. As is that hell wasp. Um, as, uh, as everybody's shuffling down, uh, as the last person gets down, I'll take the body of Zack, who we found, and I'll push it down as well, and then as soon as we get down, I'll actually push it into the river so that that body of Zachriel will forget itself. Jexter, you are the last one to descend, and as you do, you see the still-floating spiritual weapon of Sekhmet 
And as it reaches the end of its casting time, it just winks out of existence. I descend down, being the last person to go down and get everyone and <laughs> well I guess maybe we shouldn't have gone through the teleportation circle uh Probably wasn't a good idea, after all. I really... I really thought that I'd be the first one. Of all of us. I always imagined that I'd be the first one, and... The rest of you would go on and... do different things that you'd all come back and make jokes about me in a tavern when you re-met years from now. I'm sorry. You all followed me to protect me. And I've led you to death. Death and I are old friends, says Cordelia. And we can't stay here. We shouldn't just sit in here to die. No, we won't do that. Where, 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 where do we go? There's no exit. It's just hell. I know where to go. Cordelia wipes the tears from her eyes and steps out onto the peninsula. She looks back at you all, and there's a crack sound that happens right at the staircase. Just And as you all Kinda. turn to look at it, she runs into the sticks. And as soon as her feet touch it, her eyes go blank. She sinks down to her knees and then slumps over onto her elbow. Her face blissfully ignorant of all of the pain that she has seen in her life and the two people that she cared most about gone Artem falls to his knees He's so overwhelmed by everything that he's seen that he doesn't have it within him to cry. He's just empty. Hmm. 
She's not far from the edge of the water, Jackster, if you wish to remove her. No. Then she stays there and you see her look up at you, her eyes wide and innocent, as she moves her hand in the water, playing with it, looking at the ripples in wonder. And at that time, you look to this area over here, and you see it begin to shimmer and then fade as the land that was there is replaced by land that looks identical to what was there before. However, it appeared to have been hiding something, a strange mechanism three-wheeled with uh, strange metallic um, uh, panels upon it and spikes and horns. Looks misshapen, but functional, but also somewhat damaged as a figure steps forward. Um, he's got a green-tinted skin. He's wearing a uh, armor that appears to be uh, green leather. He has red orange hair and elfin features. And he steps forward, looking at Sekhmet with his arms folded. And he speaks. Oh, well, best forget her. She'll do the same for you, I'm sure. By the way, really bravo, and I can't thank you enough for taking care of those things. Wow, they were really starting to bug me, you know? I thought I'd have to wait here forever till you came along. My rescuers. Ah, sorry, how rude of me. Smiler, you may call me. At least that's what my friends call me. Well, maybe. But, Smiler, to all of you, I would hope. You all look out of sorts. Cat got your tongue? Ooh, that was probably not the right thing to say. <laughs> I, I start walking towards this figure. Likewise, but I want to kill him. Hello. Hello, my rescuer. I am Smiler the Def... Do you understand me? Is... He speaks in Elven. Hello. I am Smiler the Defiler. Thank you. F those things were really bugging me. No? Artem no? stands. I am close to him now. Yes, you are. And I'm getting closer. I'm trying to play this DM for you as I move my token closer and closer. You know, I... You don't look like you exactly belong here. I... And clearly someone of your stature and incredible taste in... Clothing, I imagine at least before all of that happened to them. I, someone like you who leads a group like this, I would suggest you come with me to safety. And then I say, you should probably shut up before you die. And I use unsettling words. Ooh. As a bonus action, I'm expending the use of my bardic inspiration to use unsettling words to quite make an impression of shut up before you die. Very good. Uh, what is all? What all is involved there? Uh, it's just I, a it, thing, right? <laughs> I get to. I get to. In a, if if something else were to happen, then I could subtract 
uh, a bardic inspiration from Smilers. <clears throat> gotcha. Rolls. Well. And in just a moment, having done that as a bonus action, I'm about to use an action. Well, I... Uh, uh, Stepping I hope you will take my suggestion <laughs> as as I said before you got too close to me as um, strongly as I meant it as uh, as his words start to echo a bit and the um, ground shivers and the dust kicks up a bit with his with his words and I need you to save against the power of my suggestion before you get too close to me. You look a little we, we will say that he did this in response to what you said. I was I was I was I was five feet out when I did unsettling words. So gotcha. yep. what's so the saving away. throw? What's the ability? It is um a wisdom saving throw versus the okay. charm effect. And I've got a D6 that I can add. You can. Me too. How? <laughs> you can't you can't add it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> that is that not yet. Let me scary. add my d6 that I said. Yeah, but no, listen, that you don't a... have to add it until after you see what you've rolled, so hold on to it. Okay, okay. I, I rolled a 19. It yeah. was so close to a 4. While this is all going and down. I have the, I'm about right. to finish my, my thing that I'm oh, doing. Sorry, mm -hmm. go, please. That's uh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm feeling it now. Uh, I step right up and put a hand on Smiler's shoulder. And as I, and I say, no, really, you should shut up. And I need a DC 15 wisdom save. Well, first of all, do you allow him to put his hand on your shoulder? Um... No, he would back away. It actually, what I'm doing simply says, I touch a creature. It does not say an attack roll. I understand, however. The save is the save, not the if, if there's no roll involved, then he's able to respond to whatever it is you do. So if you reach out as if you are about to touch him, we're going to need to roll initiative. So you still want to do that? I'm doing it. All right. All right. Well, I mean, roll I'm, some I'm, initiative I'm then. I'm doing it from the moment he started talking. Okay. <laughs> I, I, roll initiative I, I don't know. I'd, like and... to, I'd like to know what his initiative is. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a natural one. Oh, it's meant six. to be. What are you going to roll there? Uh, Please say oh, it. Oh, 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 the dice That is a natural 20 a for 23. Story. Excellent. So, say your thing, and what is your spell? Bestow curse. Mm. Now we're going to need a... Dexterity save. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nope. I'll Oops. put that out there. Um, Sorry. A wisdom save? It was a yeah. DC 15. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> oh, dear. So that is a big old fail on Smiler to the Filer's part. So what is the curse you'd bestow, Jackster? I, uh, while cursed, the target must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it wastes its action that turn doing nothing. All right. So the initiative order comes down and we get to Smiler. Smiler, make your wisdom saving throw. I believe that succeeds. Smiler, this spell was powerful. It was definite magic behind you. These are individuals not to be trifled with. But it is your turn. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so far I've told him to shut up and then I and then I made him shut up. But he suffered no damage. Um I will um you will see him. Hmm. Rude. And will flick his hand above his uh, head and a poof of sort of decaying, rotting um, foliage will pop up and kind of fall on the ground before it turns to ash again. And a same little swirl of wind 
of uh, fall leaves will appear 30 feet away as he moves 30 feet and then takes a few steps back from you. All right. And says, I am convinced that not all of you plan to die here. I mean, it seems like maybe some of you did, but um, I can tell my words are upsetting you, but I know a play, I know a path to safety, and Artem turns his head and looks at you, just a menacing glare, and then he turns his head to Cordelia, and he says, "I'm sorry." And he casts Firebolt at her body, playing in the sticks until she dies. You know, maybe I I wanted to say thank you, but maybe I should, maybe I should come back when you all are ready. I just can't guarantee that those things won't come back. Um, When, but when, when she's dead, he walks up to Smiler. Let's go. Belias follows. Zelmira stands there looking at the body of Cordelia and looking at you, Artem, and tears are streaming down her face. She doesn't know what to do. You don't know what she would say if she could say anything. But she begins to follow you, tears streaming, but she is in shock. I reach out and take Artem's hand. As I was, or was Artem way back there? He's no, you both, everybody you. eventually I comes thought, up. I thought everybody was up close. Yeah. So I, I take Artem's hand and then reach out the other hand towards Zeli. You, you have both their hands. Then, then I look at Smiler. As you said, let's go, but I've got a lovely spell that takes away all the sound you can make ready for you if you keep going. You might have to be a silent smiler. Belitis, do you have anything to say or do? He's, he's just still in shock and just escorts Zobera. And still looks over his shoulder for the wasp that's no more there. And Cadelia sunk to the bottom of the sticks. And we'll follow. Alrighty. As you all crowd around Smiler and his odd machine here on the banks of the Styx, having lost two of your companions moments after arriving in hell. We will say farewell to Descendants of Avernus for this week and look forward to joining them again next week when we find out what kind of safety Smiler is able to provide here in the hells.